Welcome to the One Lane Road Podcast with Lucas, DK, and James today. How's everybody doing? Surviving. <laughs> We're good. James coming in hot. Yeah. We're good here in the here in the One Lane Road Podcast studio for what's going to be the last time. It's going to be while. the last time Is it? for at least some time. Don't know for how long, but this might be it. I don't know. I tell you what. There's a lot of people on Facebook seem like they're upset about it. Was there? I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like uh, we'll read some comments as the show goes on, but yeah. I did post it because I didn't want to post it until we were for sure, until we got in here and talked about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, just, I thought, well, if there's anybody that wants to comment on it, just in case it is the last show, yeah. for sure, uh, people let, can- Let them go ahead and get their comments in. <clears throat> get, yeah. their, get their favorite moments in, their favorite- Shows are favorite episodes, and what well, kind of sucks? It, it's a little sad. It's a little sad, but it was. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun so far. Life just got in the way. I'm not crying, James. You're crying. I'm not crying. You could could have could have what, what? Get up on that microphone, James. What would bring a tear to your eye? You hit me in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it had to be something pretty intense to, uh-huh. to get James emotional. Mm. I don't know about that. A Packers lot. Well, not a not a motion. Don't right. speak of such blasphemy. <laughs> I saw that the Packers were the preseason um, pick to go with the NFC Championship game in the Super Bowl. I believe that. I believe it because they're the preseason pick every single year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're gonna have a good year. I believe the NFC NFC gets worse every year too. I bet we could get James down that jar he brought with him, and we could talk him into crying after he got done. Good chance. Well, that jar looks like it's in prime condition to make somebody in rough shape right there, brother. DK asked me to bring some cans. I didn't have any cans, but I had a jar. Uh, that's, brand, that's brand spanking new, too, ain't it? It don't even look like the seal's been popped on that one. I, I need know to, it ain't. It's been sitting for probably three months. Bright, shiny red. I, I've been meaning to talk to you also. If, would you happen to know anybody after our Keith Bullock episode? Do you know anybody? That can get me any apple pie moonshine. <laughs> do, do you know a guy? Not not for apple pie, I don't. Really? No. That's something you got to make yourself. Yeah. So I got a little I, recipe I, I'll teach you. I used to whip a bunch of it up, and I just, uh-huh. it, it's a lot of trouble. To, to I, take it from straight to apple pie? It ain't that bad. I'll show you. Gotta, you got you to gotta cook up some stuff. Not like meth cook up by any means. But. <laughs> well, we tried to clear that up last week yeah. with, with, yeah. with, with uh, Bullock. Yeah. Get yeah. the name right there. Yeah. Just a little apple cider, apple juice, and some other odds and ends for well flavoring. Before we go any further, are we far enough into the One Lane Road Podcast Fantasy Football League to know who's winning yet? Technically, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, technically, James Hatcher's on top. Right technically, now. James is winning. Technically, but it's one week. That really... After week one, James is ahead. Yeah, that don't mean much. By how many points? Uh, should have been a crap load. Uh-huh. Instead, it's something like I don't know, ten, fifteen. I don't know if that's a lot or not. I'd Derek, Derek, the only other po- person to break the hundred point uh, mark, actually had to had, had to play James. So here he is with one hundred and three points on the season, and he's sitting in seventh place. Dang! Because you lose, you I mean, you fall below the six that did win, right? So uh, that that's what sucks about it throughout the years when you when you got the best team and you. I remember one year I was in like. I don't know, fifth, sixth place, seventh place, and I had more points than like all but one or two people. But typically, by the, toward the end of the season, that really starts to balance itself out. Usually, your your top your top six will always almost always have the most points. But it, it early in early to mid season for sure, you can have somebody with a lot of points being way down if they happen to have some bad matchups along the way. Oh. I'm coming in. I'm coming for you. I'm in third. We got to play this hey, week. Pr- projections say you're going to win. Yeah, you know what projections mean. Yeah, they can't. They don't project Cream Hunt for forty points. I own him in all three leagues. Who? Cream Hunt. I don't even know who that is. Nobody did. Nobody knew him. Huh? Well, James did. <laughs> I had heard his name. I remember uh, James did call it, and when he drafted him, he's like, "I've I've got a stud right here." As soon as as soon as Kansas City's running back goes down, I've got a stud. And I thought, so. "Well, I, now that part I didn't predict. I did not necessarily think he would go down." You said if he does. I, yeah, I, what I really thought would happen, I thought Cream Hunt would take at least seventy oh. percent of the job by week four. I so, thought he would be on a seventy thirty split by week four. So the guy goes down. I thought I seen he was going to be a starter, and I thought 
son of a bitch is going to go off. <laughs> what did he do? 40 damn points. Then you then you had New England's running back on the bench. had like, what, 28? Gillis, 23, I think, 23. in the standard league. Okay. It's horseshit. <laughs> Every year. Mm, so. so who's in second place then right now? Curtis Rich, I do believe. Curtis Rich. And then me, then uh, I think Brandon Jeffries was right below, right behind me. Yeah. Percentage points behind me. So. Hey, Jeffries team looks t- looked tough after the draft. I was like, crap, that's going to be, you know, unless something happens, hopefully he has some injuries. <laughs> so what, what was your feel on the draft? How did you like the 13 and a half hour long draft? That was not long. Or was it not? I don't know why people keep saying that. That was absolutely a normal time length for the draft. So how long did it wind up lasting? I left it. 12.30? Four, four and a half hours, I'd say. Okay. But that's normal. It's been like that every single year. We didn't take the smoke breaks and beer breaks. We yeah, no, to. we didn't do that. But I don't know. I liked it. I, I really enjoyed the auction style. I, yeah. I really hope we do that again. Uh-huh. Uh, everybody everybody seemed to have a pretty good time doing it? No. Everybody hates the auction style. Besides James? There's a lot of people who hate the auction style. I'll tell them to suck it. That's the only thing I'm saying. <laughs> it was James's idea, and we just learned not to argue with James. Yeah. yeah. I thought you it got was Got a little great. shielding in you, don't you? No. Yeah. Got a little what? Sheldon off of uh Big Bang Theory. Yeah, Big oh. Bang Theory. <laughs> Strawberry shine. That's wine. That's wine. That's the Dana Carter version. Mm-hmm. This is the one, one of the podcast version. Eat one of them strawberries. Sing with me, James. Fork? I go high, you go I, low. I, Strawberry go lo- shine. Go low, Jay. No singing. Just throw me the 17 in there. Do it. Go, do this, go. Just one time. Just go. 17. Come on, just give me the. Just low. Strawberry low. shine. Mm-mm. 17. Good job, James. Yeah. Great job. He finally hit puberty with that note. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good job, buddy. I don't like the smell of this. Well, Get I in there. I would. Get in there. It's delicious. Get in there. I hope James don't want this back. You know, I've only had mono for. That ought to, that ought to, that'll, that'll kill it. That'll that kill everything you got. <laughs> that ain't all for you. Don't, don't get too greedy. <laughs> when I went to the doctor with mono, I said, um, they said, no working out, no playing ball, no drinking alcohol. Um, you say, yeah, only one of those is a problem. I would say, did you go, <laughs> okay, gotcha. Uh, hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> I said, can I still make love to my wife? She said, yeah, no, no, but no kissing. Well. This is the nurse that had, you know, Harley top with cleavage and and cowboy boots on <laughs> with stars and stripes and crosses on them. Uh-huh. 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 Real pro. Yeah. Was you at a truck stop by chance? What'd you say? Was you at a truck stop by chance? The, she was a lot lizard. Was Was you at a truck stop and was that possibly a guy? That. had a deep voice now that you're saying about it. <laughs> and it's, is it weird for a woman to have an Adam's apple? Yeah, I mean, not 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 anymore. Age. Not anymore, is it? <laughs> Maybe used to be, but no, not now. Huh? Yeah. Get in on one of these strawberries. Somebody, dr- somebody eat one of them strawberries. I need a fork. You need a fork. Well, we're here in just a minute. I'll go get us a fork. Or well, I won't get us. Well, I'll get y'all a fork. I, you need, you need this. <laughs> no, I ain't trying none of that. Might as well. I've been. It's the last show. I've been puny for. What's gonna happen? I've been puny for a week now. I'm not about to jump in there and get that. <sighs> well. So yeah. tonight, for you guys on the show, we're going to have several, well, I don't know about several, but we're going to have um, a few a few regulars. So we're going to have some regulars. We're going to have some uh, former guests that have, that have appeared from time to time. I, I'm afraid we're going to miss one. I'll, I'll talk to Justin Wells um, on the way here to Lucas's and to the studio. And just talk to him out in the parking lot if we'd uh, probably give you the heads up maybe on that. <laughs> we'd have been ready. I just ran in the house and done the interview, but... I, 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 I literally had just come downstairs and turned everything off because I thought, ah, it's 7 o'clock. We're probably going to do it tonight anyway. Oh, that was my fault. We had some late, no, right. late stuff. That so, happened. So we realized we're going to have a later night than usual. Oh, right? yeah. Because we can't do it next time because this is the last show. This is the last one. Not too late. I have a bedtime. <laughs> well, l- let's clear things up. Our All three of our uh, late nights late like nights 9.30. Is, 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 <laughs> is, is a lot different than what they used to be. Last damn night it. I was asleep at 9.15. Damn father time and responsibility and children. Them damn you children. Damn children will get you. Yeah. God dang it. DK's going to get one of these strawberries. Like this yeah, who cares if you stick your old hand in the jar? I mean, you only got two fingers in it. Oh, that made me that made me cringe. That I got not, two fingers in it? No, the, the you about to eat it. Oh wow, that one, they're delicious. I tell you what I done after the draft. They don't like eating it after you put two fingers in it. Uh-huh. There there were some of those left after the draft. Uh-huh. And uh 
Um, you like I turned him into a smoothie. You liked where I went with that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. turned you turned him into a turned smoothie? turned him into a smoothie one night. Oh, my God. It was so good. Drunk. I was home alone, actually, for probably the first time I've ever drank Have you ever alone. done anything in that house, that new house of yours? Have you ever done I'm going to go get those. Have you, ever d- for- have you ever done anything drunk in that house, James, that you have regretted yet? Not that. No. Well, Even for fantasy football purposes, you didn't? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And we won't talk about that. No, no, we're not talking about that. <laughs> I don't know about regret it. It, it would have been worth it. It's pretty funny for your legacy. Yeah. One day you can tell Maverick what you did to get in a fancy football league. I tried too. I tried so hard. I can't believe they didn't let you in. I, you, what, what, it makes what? me wonder what everybody else sent. <laughs> can we tell it? Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can I mean, we, we really? Make a deal. Okay. Well, you gotta so, tell it. I can't tell it the better. So you there, there's a a podcast <laughs> I listen to regularly, only about fantasy football. Um, I listen to, and I, by regularly, I mean, it's a daily show, five days a week and they have a listener league and this is a national show. So there's a lot of people trying to get into this thing. And they really said, they said they didn't want any boring people. They said, make sure that when you send us the email, you want, you make sure that it gets our attention. And I'm a big fan of the show Naked and Afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get naked soon? So, although I covered everything that had to be covered, I, I took a completely, well, I didn't take it. No, Almost un- un- backtrack. Unfortunately, backtrack. unfortunately, I had to convince Sarah to take it. A nude she, photo. <laughs> a completely nude photo of me doing a Marilyn Monroe pose with my football tattoo showing to try to get in this listener league, and I was rejected. <laughs> I feel sorry for the guys that had to look at the email. I w- how do you? How I do sure you, would hate for you to send that to us before for our last show. I'd hate for that to be something that we got to post <laughs> online for our last show. If you done that, I would literally hate y'all for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty. It's pretty out there. How do you? Um, how do you put that out there for your girlfriend when she comes to the house when you're sitting there, b- little little on the drunk side? I'm gonna go ahead and say you had to feed her a couple of them strawberries first. No, no, <laughs> no. She was very much so not drinking. Mm-hmm. I, I just told her, which she knew I listened to it. And I'd been telling her I wanted to get in this listener league for about a week, and they they opened it up for about a two week span there to let people send in uh, their submissions. Uh-huh. And I was like, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. And after obviously having a few, I decided that. I that was my idea to get to get attention and try to get in the league was well I'd say you at least got some attention <laughs> I'd yeah. say that picture floated I, around I hope bit. that picture's not on a porn site somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say it at least got floated around the office a little bit <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I actually fully expected them to uh, mention something about it on the next show about how they that sort of email shouldn't be sent <laughs> they didn't even bring it up ma'am I, w- I wish I knew where that picture was at. I right do now. too, gosh, I do too. That would be a, a fitting, a fitting last post for the that, show. That, that wouldn't be. And if y'all do something like that, if you oh, happen be to fantastic. come across it, I promise I'll stab you with this damn. I book. wish. I just wish I had Sarah's phone number. I just wish I could text Sarah. Oh, I'm sure. You're, I'm sure you could get it. But I so promise, Sarah, if you're listening, <laughs> send that you, to us. You would get stabbed with a fork. Send that to. You'd have to see, you'd have to see he's it already. First. He's already stabbed me with a uh, frog gig one time about 15 years ago. I ain't scared of a fork. The fork's gonna. The fork's <laughs> gonna be intentional. <laughs> so that's disturbing. Very disturbing. It was very disturbing the next morning when I looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you at least tan? You should at least tan first. Do you have a tan at all? I, I was fat and I looked awful. <laughs> I looked at the picture. I'm like, is that that's really so good. me? <laughs> oh God, I just <laughs> need to see that. No. That's like when I. That's like when I got sick uh, over the summer with all this crap, and I got down like 25 pounds. I went. And I looked at myself naked in the mirror. I was like, dude, you're still. What the hell did I look like in January? If I look like <laughs> you're this, tw- 25, you're 25 pounds now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. You've got this the halfway look of that's pretty good, and this halfway look of that's a little rough. Because that's what it is. It's about it's about where it's at. I was going to swallow mine. <laughs> oh, God. I was sipping on it like I was drinking on it, you know, chewing on it like, like a damn appetizer over here. And James just <coughs> chewed one up in front of me. Uh, yeah, that was... Neither one of your faces looked like that was any good. Yeah, well, the moonshine didn't look too bad, though. It's pretty good. Can we get a strawberry shine out of you now? Do what? Can we get a strawberry shine out of you? 
Uh-huh. Just say it. Say it. No. Damn you, James. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not Damn that much you. fun. Oh, yeah, I don't believe that. So, I've, yeah. I've never went back and listened to one of these that I was on. Sarah tried to listen to one of them once in front of me, and I literally made her turn it off. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I mean, not you or bad. But. My my voice is awful, awful. You know, the thing is, is that's not any different than what it normally sounds like. Oh, I, I agree with that. That's <laughs> the problem. That is the problem. Oh, me. Uh. So, what James has stood out to you? The shows that you did listen to, the ones that you did care to revisit. What's some of your favorite ones? Oh God! Way to put me on the spot. Um, I actually really like the uh, Titans player, not Bullock. I didn't care much for his interview at all. Actually, last uh, week's you didn't. Uh, uh-uh, uh I didn't. Huh. I listen. I listen. I didn't like it. Uh, Why? I, I didn't like him. Huh? Well, he was drunk. Well, okay, and, and that may have been it. I just <laughs> no, didn't I like his drunk. attitude. The guy before that, uh, Pollard. Pollard. Bernard, Bernard Pollard. Pollard. Bernard Pollard. Yeah. Is- it's really good. I, I actually really liked his attitude overall. Uh, he's always got a good attitude. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He come out of the league and he's really, really the, hitting yeah, it hard. And you know? just the interview in general seemed yeah. way more professional. And he didn't say the word man <laughs> 500 times. <laughs> did Bullock say man? Or did I say man? Listen to it. Just go listen to it. Okay. Uh, you know, the story on that was, and we weren't going to mention it, but... Uh, he mentioned it towards the end, you know, we put it, we'd been on, you know, the day after I texted him and Pollard both at the same time a couple of weeks ago, Bernard messaged me back like a couple hours later and we hooked it up that Keith actually messaged me back like that next morning, the Thursday morning said, Hey, you know, anytime you need me, let's get together. I said, yeah, sometime in the next two weeks. So of course the Wednesday night we were supposed to record and he put, he asked if we could reschedule for, a, uh, he was going to a concert and forgot about it. And I said, yeah, no big deal. You know, whatever. And that Friday, we all got together. I go over about 12.30, yeah. one, 1 o'clock. Uh, he texts me and said, can we do two? And then 2.45, he called. We talked about eight minutes, and his phone cut out in the middle, middle of his sentence. Literally, like mid-sentence, his phone just cuts completely out. And we didn't get nothing back from him. Then 8.15, I'm sitting there recliner, my phone dings. I says, yo, Let's uh, do this. I got the day drinking earlier. Can we, uh, you ready? I was like, well. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh. So we do. I thought we got some good stuff out of it. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, other other than Pollard, would uh, any any of the other stuff stick out to you? I know it's been a long time, probably. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff's more fun and cut up. Yeah, uh, which it, it's good to relive a lot of those moments, uh, especially even talk about stuff from high school. That that's nice. Of course, I was there, so <laughs> I, really, I relate to that. I don't know if the general audience does a lot, but, right. but I do because I was there. So that that sort of stuff is really good to hear. Uh, when Tyreek was was playing good ball, you are talking about him. I, I I really liked hearing all that. Yeah, uh, all the accolades that went with that. Yeah, the uh, interview with them not so much. It didn't go so well. Too quiet, but <laughs> he's uh he's hard to get anything out of. A real humble kid, real quiet. Humble well, Rob kid. Rob saved us yeah. on that one. You know, yeah, Rob. Yeah, the good the Rob Edwards interview. Now I I really liked listening to that because he he is somebody that I have seen around a lot, but never really. I've Got never to, been close up him. to him to get to know him. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he—he's hey, a really good interview. He, I, good guy. I, I like I liked hearing that and actually feeling like you got to know him a little bit because you see him yeah. on the sidelines, but and he's a real intense guy on the sidelines. You don't really know about him, but he's not just so. Really. Yeah, well, I mean, a little bit, right? He's uh, got that basketball coach to him. You don't? No, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> you don't think so? Rob's kind of there, right? Yeah, he he's kind of there telling him to substitute, and that's kind of it. I mean, he don't really seem intense. Uh huh. Huh. Uh, I don't know. I've seen his head about blow off. I didn't tell you. I was going to say the few times that I remember seeing him. I I'm remember sure seeing there's his head moments, explode. but most of the time, of course, most of the time when I seen him, they were winning big and he's kind of relaxing on the sideline. He didn't give a Donnie Cherry. You got to think. No, no. All right, man. I don't no. know who this number is. Answer it online and mess with him if it's a parent. If it's a. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, there Let's we try. go. Let's try yeah. now. Loud and clear. Over and out. <laughs> and all right, on the phone. Being poor and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> on the phone, we got Mr. Steve Mackey. You, uh, now, you've never been on the show, but everybody will know your crazy son, Jeremy, and, of course, Jeff. Uh, so, welcome to the show for the first time. Welcome to the show. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. But... Uh, I wanted, Jeremy told me that you guys are signing off, and I wanted to call and let you know that I sincerely appreciate both of you guys been 
awful kind to my family, and you know, well, I hope nothing but the very best for both of you. We appreciate that. You got a pretty good clan out that way, so we it's always been yeah, easy to make do, good to y'all. They'll do it when they're asleep. <laughs> they're in pretty good shape when they're asleep. You know? <laughs> yeah. I only worry about them from time my eyes open till the time my eyes close. Right. <laughs> yep. But they'll do in the pink, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Uh, pretty good bunch. You know, you know, I go to Walmart and I feel like royalty, you know. <laughs> I, I, I see some things there. I mean, you know, good Lord. <laughs> Makes my family look good. I just seen, uh, there's, uh, a, there's a woman at my work that has the people of Walmart calendar on her desk and she gives them to me about a week at a time. And I, boy, it's some, that's some, some nice stuff you see. Yeah. Oh man! One, one. But, uh, no, listen, you guys, you guys are a top ship in my book, boys. Well, we I pre- sure do appreciate. You. We appreciate you too, yeah. boy. I want you to well, know you're. I, just, I, I want you to know you're in the minority saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty rainy old night out here tonight, son. Yeah. Yeah. Sloppy. Well, so I, well, I hope everybody's careful driving, you know. Did, uh, how you, know, you know, the police are lazy. They don't work on wreck. So I hope everybody's <laughs> careful driving, you know. Especially them old state troopers. Ain't that right? Oh, yeah, them dang old state troopers don't like to get out and do nothing when it's raining, do they? No, no. They ain't going to get out unless they have to. <laughs> which I don't blame them. I never did. Right. <laughs> well, listen, Jer- yeah. Jeremy told me uh, last night that you guys listened to his last interview where he's at, you know, he's been on the show several times, but... He said that you, li- right. you you listened to the official interview of Jeremy Mackey. What'd you what'd you take off from that? Yeah. Well, you know, uh talking about being sloppy and everything, uh, I had an old trooper tell me years ago when I got on the highway patrol, he said, Boy, so don't be walking in the mud and the woods and stuff. So that's why I thought your job said you're a highway patrolman, said you're supposed to stay on the road. I said, I got you, I can do it, you know. Uh, <laughs> Always try to stay clean, you know. <laughs> I got I got nasty once or twice, but I tried not to. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. But listen, you guys, I just want to tell you, thinking about you. Hope we get to see both of you soon. And uh, like I said, I know you'll be. I know you'll be seeing old Germ. You know. Oh man. yeah, we'll see him. Hey, we'll my have little, my little my little wild child. Uh-huh. We'll have another cracker yeah. cracker barrel date for too long. Yeah, we have to go cracker bar on, put on the feed bag, <laughs> sit down, sit down and eat. And of course, I've, my problem is I've had the feed bag on once or twice. You know what my stomach is, don't you? What is That's it? a chicken grave, chicken graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken graveyard. <laughs> so, so, listen, you guys be cool, take care, and be safe, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you for calling in. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. See you, all, right, all right, Steve. See you, buddy. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Steve Mackey. Steve Mackey. He didn't raise nobody with no per- without no personality. All them <laughs> boys is wild. And That's right. Firecrackers. We got a tweet come in here. Got a tweet. We got a text. Let's see. Let's see. It won't pop up. We got a couple of things going to be good to read. Yeah. What we got? I don't know, man. My phone's down here in this. Down here in this dungeon. I finally did figure out the uh, password, though. And don't even play that game with me. You've got 15 <laughs> possible passwords for this thing. Because it says I've got no. Oh, here we go. Oh, they're just likes and retweets oh. from our stuff. Uh, but yeah, what about old Steve Mackey? I don't know. Uh, He's a good old fella right there. I, I, was, I was hoping he would. Uh, uh, he's got the he's the master of misdirection too. Seems like <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he could hear us, but then he caught that cracker bra marks. I think he just uh, I think he just shucked and jived our uh, uh, your question there. I believe he did. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't call in. Um, but I, I was trying to get him to bite on the Jeremy. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Story at. from last night. You just, yeah, I, I think he just, juked you. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I got to say it now. Yeah. Um, I got. We got some good stuff to read here. In a little while we'll read. Jesse Kramer is live. Another <laughs> another follow, fellow right. alumni. Okay, so I tagged a lot of people in this. And this is a super last minute. Me and Lucas literally decided, just like you know what, man. Let's just call it. 
For now. I don't know. I've come pretty sad about it, honestly. Yeah. I'm I am sad about it. And I'm having a hard time with it. After I was, especially after I read this stuff and Lindsay's like, Maybe y'all shouldn't quit doing it for now. Don Asbury's tore all the hell. I talked to Don for 10, 20 minutes. He's like, This is stupid. Y'all are just hitting your stride. He said <laughs> He said, Everybody's comfortable, everybody's playing. He's like, I don't know if you're playing roles. He's like, But I know. He said, Y'all seem like you're doing something different right now. Yeah. It's not a role. It's just Um, so Jeremy Mackey and Travis Humphrey give sad faces. Uh huh. Blake Allen said, dude, this is worse than MLB losing the Expos. Then everybody got into kind of a gif war. Caleb Allen said, this feeling sucks. Blake Allen has this guy crying. Another thing from Nancy Gall. No from Sherlyn Prophet. And Derek Woolbright has a thing that says, sad from Donald Trump. And I said, it's the first non-offensive thing Trump has said since in office. <laughs> and the most accurate. Tad says, I know words. I have the best words from a Trump gift. Uh, another few other things that's just kind of said. Um, Thad said, going to miss this podcast, guys. Enjoyed a good laugh and some sports week to week. I have to say my favorite episode was the rant of DK. R-I-P-O-L-R. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. Let's see if we can't get that trend in R I P O L R. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that rant was fun. That was genuine too. I mean, I, it was so genuine. I had to do what everybody else in any kind of media does. I had to retract next week all my true statements that I meant. <laughs> everybody got everybody got them. offended, so I had to say I didn't mean it, even though I really did mean it. Most of it. Mickey Ryan. Hate to hear this. Always enjoyed jumping on with you guys. He's a good guest. It's pretty good. Uh-huh. You just get a like that. Chad Flat says, No, I hate to hear this as well. On the other hand, I completely get it. Nobody understands the time that goes into doing a podcast unless you've done it. There you go. You guys should be proud. You managed to build a show that a lot of people enjoyed. Hopefully, when the time is right, OLR will make a comeback. Of course, I mean, well, that's I, always open right there. That's for sure. There, it takes a lot of time, and there's just a lot of stuff going on in both our lives right now. It gets harder and harder. If you're not consistent with it, which is what's been our problem here lately, we're not been able to be consistent. If you're not consistent with it, everybody starts getting, where's it at? Everybody starts wondering, you know, what's going on with it. You get a lot of questions about that. And it's just really not fair to the fans, you know, if they're looking for it at a, all the time and then it's not going to be there. So it's. Yeah. I mean, most people's podcasts uploaded automatically every week. And yeah. Uploaded automatically two or three times a week. And when, you know, we're. Or James's case, five fancy football. Five times a week. A week. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it, it's hard. It's. You know, it, it's it's just time consuming, and we you know can't do it like it needs to be doing it right now. Maybe we can in a little bit though. Yeah, for any pro wrestling fans, let's, uh, yeah, Chad Flat pro Chad wrestling Flat's weekly. got pro wrestling weekly and Monday is War. Yeah. So if that's what you get, you get into anything like that, go check him out. Um, where podcasts are available, and uh, he does a lot of great research, and yeah, I always make sure him and John Ward and. Keely Cash on his other one, uh, on Pro Wrestling Weekly. They're always in, always informed and one of the best podcasting voice out there. Oh, he's great. And so let's go ahead and clear it up. Uh, there's no internal struggle <laughs> no. or beef between me and Lucas. We've survived, James. Yeah, me and Lucas have survived. Mm-hmm. I think was you taking over under how long we would take before we'd kill each other on this show? Well, not that I know of. <laughs> no, I was asking. I was asking. Oh, yeah. No. Was asking. no, there is no internal struggle. There's no internal beef. There's no power struggle or anything going on. It's purely just a time consideration at this point in time. Yeah. If anything, we probably got probably got closer after this. Not to sound, oh, that's not sound sure. gay or nothing, but Lucas kind of. I did. I got off for a while. I did. I, I did get that way for on the text with you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that was super fragilistic gay. Yeah. There. Yeah, it's, it was a it's a bit, it's been a good experience for me, but a lot of fun. You know, I'd uh, I'd been gone for a long time from a lot of people. You know, I I don't I don't get out and hang out with a lot of people very much. So this has been a fantastic thing for me. You know, and I'm uh, you know, like Don said, we fell into our roles. You know, and it's really it was just pretty easy. You know, it, I like to I like the technical side of it, which has been well broadcast on here. And uh, but then you know, here in the last little bit, I've kind of hit I've hit a pretty good creative stride you know and yeah. it's been a lot of fun uh broke me out of my shell took about unfortunately it took about a year to to get me to break out but it was you know it's been been really good but the uh, uh life's just getting in the way right now a little bit so it fairness to you the creative side was was there it was it was kind of being uh, i don't know it was restricted it was restricted a little bit by things that you were didn't want it to 
overshadow. Yeah. Or <laughs> Didn't want to cross lines on. Yeah, but. cross lines would be a good way to, yeah. to put it. But now I think it's it's the personality that you showed in the last two or three months that me and James and everybody else has come to custom to knowing mm-hmm. over the years. So it was refreshing to see you break out like that. But uh, yeah, no, no, no struggle. We we get along good. And uh-huh. uh, we're, I'm not pregnant. Lucas is not pregnant. I don't think so. I'm not on drugs. Don't look at me. I'm sure as hell not pregnant. <laughs> I don't know. That's not what them boys with the, the, the fo- football podcast thought. Hey, they can suck it. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down 35 pounds right now. Are you? Since since the since Monday the photo. After, since the Monday after the Fourth of July, he saw himself naked in that picture and was like, "Damn it, <laughs> no. we're going on a diet the next morning." We we were already we were already starting a diet. Or what kind of diet are you on? Just counting calories. Calorie counting. How many are you limiting yourself to? Eighteen hundred. Uh, I got 2, an app. I got an app that deals with all of it. I That's plug true. in what I eat. It tells me how many more I'm allowed. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been super easy. Yeah. All right, I, I feel like it's taken almost no effort. Yeah, that's good. Other than the, the meal prep, you know. Get the meal prep takes a while, well, but, but it's fun after you get into a routine of it. Well, we don't meal prep. Like, everybody else does this thing where on Sunday they spend the whole damn day cooking, and yeah. we don't do that. We we cook dinner every night, and whatever we have for dinner is leftover lunch the next day. Uh-huh. Really complicated. That makes it pretty easy for the <laughs> calorie counting too, doesn't it? Super. It's already easy. in there. Already but, yeah. There. Well, and finding that stuff on that app. Uh, if anybody ever wants to lose weight, get on the Lose It app. It's a orange scale. Looks like scales that you weigh on. Uh huh. Super awesome for keeping up with calories. So, yeah. No, I I really believe in it. Well, it's, I, I've got my. I don't know if y'all either one of you noticed, but my uh, podcast slash gym. Is in like really good shape right now. I don't know if y'all noticed that over there on the other side, and I've been really hitting it pretty hard this last week and a half in the gym, starting to lift them weights again. So if you want to, I have no interest in lifting weights. You don't, we we done a little running back when it was. I've been uh, doing yoga too, dog. Now come winter, um, DDP yoga. Uh, no, just uh, yoga with Adrian on YouTube. I, I we done some one uh, night when we uh, we couldn't run for a couple nights in a row. We done some yoga in the living room. Yeah, but the goal is come winter time. I think we're going to try to get through insanity. Oh yeah, you used to do insanity pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you remember it's, the it's time? Awesome. Do you remember the time you asked me to come over to your house and do insanity? I was like, wait, a workout video? And you're like, yeah. And I said, do I need to wear my <laughs> leggings and my <laughs> my headband? Yeah, yeah, because it's that easy. My, yeah, I've but. got uh, <laughs> my wife's got some uh, like twelve week something. Or exercise videos up there that will, I mean, ruin your day if you hadn't been doing anything. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, the average person cannot. We can't they, do insanity. They, they can no, they can do every single thing in insanity. Oh yeah, they cannot make it through the video. Oh it's no, it's too tough. Yeah, I got. I did. I made it through about 27 minutes of uh, yoga with Adrian the other day, and it was a 45 minute long thing. And she, uh, just I don't know. She went from this thing where you just kind of you just kind of in the floor stretching your but, back but out. But you're just holding yourself there for so long. Yeah, this was like three minutes later. She was still doing it, and I was my arms were shaking. I you're, was about to pass you're out. You're over here hollering, Adrian, sound like Sylvester so Stallone. Yeah, and then she turns into she like she got her hand on hands on the ground, and she's made a big V with her body right, which yeah. wasn't hard. I was you know peeking under my arm trying to see what she was doing, and then I got. I got in that position. I turned around and looked, and she had walked her feet all the way up to her hands. She was standing bent straight over, palms flat on the ground, legs straight. And they, just, do that, they do it on sanity too. Can you not do that? I can, but not for three minutes. I can't. No. I skip the stretches on insanity when it's over. No, you don't you need got, to. Or that's probably over. the best part. It is. Not when you're on time limit. But <laughs> I, the, the honest truth is, it's more of an age thing. I mean, I'm getting a little bit older. I felt like it was time Preach for me it, to, to lose that weight yeah. before it got too late for me to lose that weight. Before you get that can't. diabetes. Yeah, basically. And uh, basically just made a commitment to it. And not a commitment where I'm not allowed to have this or not allowed to have that. that that's calorie, what makes it so easy. That calorie count is really the way to go. If yeah, you're not, because I can eat anything. Like, some nights I want a chocolate cookie. I go eat a damn chocolate cookie. Yeah, and you just don't eat the other calories around yeah, it, right? I just find I just find some way, like, I, I may end up having to eat a salad or eat yeah. less to accommodate it. Yeah. And the key, the real key is being honest with yourself. I mean, yeah. I, I can go in here and I can find a hamburger that's worth 100 calories. But the fact is, if I just eat a giant burger from the dairy burger or whatever, yeah. That's not real. Yeah. You have to be honest with yourself. Yeah, here's a here's a thing for you guys out there that are getting older with us. About 2,000 calories a day is about all you need. And uh, one big hamburger, one big hamburger 800 is to 800 usually. to 1,000. Yeah. yeah, so you go eat lunch, got the hamburger by itself. And then get them 300 calorie fries to go no, with it. The fries are worse. They're usually about six. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you get the big ones, they are. And then you 
But there's so many good meals you can eat that yeah. stay that are stay that stay healthy. Like the things we eat usually so delicious. Today was the second time I've had a salad since we started this diet. Really? The second time. See, I like a big salad. I like a salad every now and again. And I do too. Like tonight, it was delicious. But I tell you something else though. If you uh, whenever you start eating better and you start cutting out those other foods, like you know, you just ain't eating all that other junk all the time. You don't crave it after a little while either. That's not accurate. I would eat a whole pizza right now if I had it. <laughs> you get after it right now. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> but it becomes easier to it avoid does. them. It really does. Yeah. Um, I ate spaghetti last night. And garlic bread and a lot of it. <laughs> and then I ate cookies at 11 o'clock. When I fell asleep on the couch from like 9.30 to 11, I woke up and I got cookies. That must be nice. I eat chili. Well, it must be nice. You want to pack my fat ass frame around? <laughs> no, I mean, it's not nice. You just, I have no willpower. Ah, you two ain't that much fun. I, I feel so much better. Like, I've been playing softball in Berksville, and I've been playing outfield, which I haven't done in years. And I've been jumping the fence, going and retrieving ball. I just, I feel so much better on the daily. I feel like the last time you played outfield, me and you about knocked each other out. Yeah. I may have knocked you out. Yeah, I, I about done that to a woman. Though, Did right? you? <laughs> me and James right head full of steam into each other, right field and center field, which collided would, with heads. Which would have been awesome, but Lucas but was probably about huge. 190 <laughs> to 200 pounds at the time. And I was... I was about a buck sixty, so I look like Bugs Bunny running into a or the Wile E. Coyote running into a pole on Looney Tunes. I was, I was one seventy six, and then I, my head's seventy six of those pounds. So it, <laughs> your face did finally grow into those ears, James. Not really. Somebody told me the other day my my body finally grew into my head. I thought, well, that wasn't at least nice. Of them. I think they were calling you fat. I'd be well, careful with that. That's all right. I'll take it anyway. I can get it. <laughs> Amber Harden said she was calling in about two minutes, so we'll see where she's at in just a second, we'll, or we can keep this conversation going. I don't care what you want to do. I'll be uh, damned. Uh, would you what look, time? Would you look at that? Amber Harden. Hello. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just hanging out. What's up with you guys? Just sitting around and doing a podcast. I'm trying to wrap this mediocre yeah. podcast up for, for the final time. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Why are you guys taking a break? I saw that on Facebook. Uh, it's just uh, time and time and family and life and stuff just moving a little too fast everywhere else. And this is just pulling away from this. I heard that. Yeah. Lucas has got a heroin addiction. He's really And I just can't with. kick it, so I've got to go to rehab for a few, a few You know, days. you need to take care of that. <laughs> I've just, Black. I thought it's time to just go ahead and take care of it. Black tar. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Did you just leave the gym? Uh, no, I did not. I went to the gym way earlier. I am actually out uh, at Whiskey Kitchen. Oh, wow, that's a nice place. You yes, out, you yes. out on my the patio? service sucks, so I apologize for not being able to answer earlier. Um, no, we were inside. Ah. Yeah, I like that area down there. The Gulch has really grew into a nice area. Yeah, it's crazy. I was just talking about that because this new hotel just went up like before my very eyes. Uh-huh. And I was like, what is happening to this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like it area down there. It's fun. Well, we're we're just trying to get a lot of our favorite guests that we've that we've had on this show will probably be super long. Um we wanted to reach out to you. We didn't decide this until about three o'clock today, literally about two thirty, three o'clock. We're just like, man, you know, I don't. Our creative's not here right now. We're just let's just let's just give it a break for a little while. So this may not be like forever, but so it hit me like I there's like a 15 minute stretch of no service between my house and Lucas's house. Um, <laughs> so I was just like thinking of guests. So I'm, I apologize for the super last minute text, but thanks for coming through for us. But no problem, no problem. So what's been going on with you since last time we talked? Um, fitness competitions keeping you busy? Uh, you know what? Okay, so I had my last competition June 17th. And I am in my off season until May 12th. May 12th will be my next competition. For now, I am really loving the off season life. <laughs> it looks like on social media, somebody's been loving some whiskey every now and then. Oh, yeah. You know, having some whiskey every once in a while, um, getting to eat a lot of carbs, not having to do much cardio at all. Like, it's kind of great. Um, I'm in that building season, but. Uh, I don't know if you saw my stat set today, but uh, I finally hit maintenance with my coach today. It's been three months of gaining weight, and uh, today my coach was finally like, all right, we're good right here. Let's let's maintain this. And I was like, oh, does that mean no more food? (laughs) (laughs) It just means more cardio. No, it does not. Uh, It just means we're going to kind of stay where we're at with food and cardio and everything for right now, and then we may increase a little later, but... uh, yeah, so it's it's been cool though. It's been it's been a good experience. Kind of a it's 
it's a little stressful after a show when you're kind of reversing because you're gaining weight on purpose, which is not something that any normal people do. Um, no, we just talked about that. Yeah, but that's what I was doing, and that was stressful, but I, it, it <sighs> happened, and it, uh, luckily I'm in maintenance now, which just kind of takes a load off my, off my shoulders because even though, like, you know that you're supposed to gain weight, like, that's what's supposed to happen, it's still not that easy, like, to check the scale once a week and to see that number go up every week. Um, I, it's kind of just, like, messes with your head, you know? What's it like seeing that six-pack getting softer and softer? Ah, uh, that's the worst part, man. <laughs> because I was, you know, I was so proud of that six pack because nobody has one, right? right? And so I was so proud of it. But then, like slowly, day by day, uh, in June and July, that was going away, and it was so stressful. I was like, I just want to keep my six pack. <laughs> but in reality, you just can't keep that year round. You can't keep your body fat that low. Like, but it's going to help me in the long run because right. as I continue to eat and build up my calories, then that means next year when I cut again, um, I won't have to go as low as I did this last time around. Well, how are you feeling about the uh, Olympia coming up? About the what? The Olympia. The Olympia is coming up this weekend, oh, I believe. Oh, the Olympia. Yeah. You know, I was actually going to go and work at Booth and then I didn't. Um, but I'm That'd definitely interested to see. I'm definitely interested to see how everyone does. Um, you know, Courtney King, Miss Bikini Olympia last year yep. is like one of my idols. I think she's amazing. Um, but she's not competing this year. She's decided to kind of take a little time off, uh, mm-hmm. to kind of heal her body and build up her metabolism and everything. So I'm interested to see how it all goes, but I'll be watching from afar from Instagram, but yeah, it's definitely like, it's a super exciting event for nerdy bodybuilders like myself. <laughs> yeah, me too. They, I've been, uh, I've been watching everybody starting to cut down and it's, you know, it's, well, you know, you know it firsthand, but you're starting to see everybody's bodies change. And you know, some of these guys, they go from just absolute monsters to just cut down to where they don't look like they're big but whenever they get on stage they just look like you know they're shredded monsters again so it's it's real neat to watch like you say nerdy nerdy bodybuilder fans (laughs) (laughs) i'm not way too like i nerd out about people's food and what they're eating what they're doing and yeah (laughs) yeah it's crazy but yeah when you start reading people's food logs you know you start being really (laughs) interested in it you're like Nobody else is interested in this. <laughs> I took my I took my headphones out the last forty five seconds and t- drunk this uh, strawberry moonshine in front of me. Actually, <laughs> in other words, DK is not a nerdy bodybuilder. He is not a nerdy bodybuilder. Okay. But I love your passion so much. Like I, I, I wish I was passionate about that like you guys are. Mm. I would, I'm passionate strawberry about it. Strawberry shine. I wish I, I was passionate about it <laughs> the same way she is. I wish I could get into it to do it like she's doing it. Yeah. You could. Yeah, I know. Could, I, well, I, you know, we after I reached out to you the other day, I'm, I've been, I had that last thing you told me on my mind. I thought uh, I might give you another call back here after the first of the year. There you go. There. I told you I'm getting, I'm getting my personal. Oh, I, I told Lucas I maybe didn't tell you, DK. I'm getting my personal training certification. Yeah. So I'm gonna be super official here in a couple months. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, she'd be like official with a whistle. Look, I don't know why you guys are meaning that towards me because I've lost twenty five pounds this summer. Hey, don't let hey I swear. Hey, honey, don't don't do that to him. He's got sick and quit eating is what he did. He didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. He's been sick for the last two damn months. He's I've been telling him he had the uh, easy ease. Yeah. I, I said I said don't Google shit when you're sick because it's, it's everything from the common cold to the easy ease. <laughs> like you just, yes, that's absolutely true. WebMD is it it'll mess you up. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, no. When I seen you guys at the concert, I was uh I had whatever you know because I kept drinking all that whiskey because beer was only hurting me. So I was like, man, beer, yeah. beer and whiskey are the same price. It's a no brainer. So <laughs> oh, of course. So yeah, I kept knocking it out, and I went to the doctor about a month ago after i had strep twice and uh end up with mono so yeah i've lost all this weight just for being sick all summer i thought i was dying well dk you know you might as well maintain it <laughs> <laughs> yeah now, now that it's here you know yeah. now that it's here but I, I just sent james out to my uh orca cooler on the back of my <laughs> truck speaking, speaking of concerts though dustin are you going to go to kip rock coming up well i don't like to That's reference him as kid rock i like to know him as bobby as you know he is bobby he is our good friend bobby yeah. are you gonna come see him i don't know you have you i mean y'all hooked me up with the ticket because i mean have you seen what they're going for on StubHub? uh that we paid a pretty penny for it well chris paid a penny for, for a pretty penny um for the friday show uh i'd love to go i mean you know maybe i mean i don't know i just looked at him yesterday and they were like 
Where's y'all seats at? Uh, I think we're sitting lawn. We're we're going uh we went as cheap as possible, but it still wasn't cheap at all. No, it's so, still like ninety bucks uh, on StubHub for the yeah. for the grass. Oof. All right. Well, we'll 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 talk about this later. We don't have to talk about this uh, <laughs> in front of everyone, but we'll talk okay. about this later because I want you to see Bobby. Yeah, I've seen Bobby a lot. I've just never met Bobby. <laughs> well, we want to try to make that happen. Yeah. I mean, I I can't. I have, I have no power whatsoever. But you know, <laughs> hey, all you got to do is just give him Dustin a little bit of an opening, and he'll slide <laughs> in there. <laughs> That's true. But you know who I met last week? Um, if you saw my Instagram. I met a Backstreet Boy. Oh yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I yeah. thought that was real. I mean, I I knew that you said that, but I wasn't sure. If, I thought it was him. Uh, I wasn't lying to you. Yeah. So I okay. I am. I I'll give away my age right now. I'm 28 years old. Therefore, I grew up in like prime Backstreet Boy era, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. And so when I was at Losers and I saw AJ McLean behind the bar, I was like, "Oh my god, that's AJ!" <laughs> and I like. We made like weird eye contact with him. Yeah. Then next thing I know, Chris is sitting in his SUV listening to like songs that he's written. They're talking about right together, and I'm like, "How did that happen?" Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, so then like once they get done with that, we all shared a hot dog together at the at the hot dog stand, and he's a super cool, dude. Super uh, cool. Once so you've shared a hot dog, that's, that's like, a pretty big thing. We did. We shared a hot dog, which is like means we're best friends now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but was, yeah, so, so I'm not like a starstruck person, but meeting a Backstreet Boy was was uh, one of the, that was top of my list for sure. So you was a Backstreet girl, not an NSYNC girl, then? Oh no, I was 100 percent Backstreet Boy. <laughs> All right. I just um, I, I think I've wrote a check. I'm afraid I'll, I'll have to cash one day. One of our listeners, Colin Glass from Kentucky, he uh, he always tweets me or tweets our OLR podcast Twitter page about um. I think Backstreet Boys and um, Florida, Florida Georgia Line did a concert together, and I was like, "Look, next time they're in town together, buy me a ticket, and I'll go." And uh-huh. Like, and I, I hope he forgets it, but I will. I, I'm a man of my word, and I will go to a Backstreet Boys Florida <laughs> Georgia Line if my ticket is bought and it's within two hours of me. Which I mean, everything's two hours from me. I, so. I want to see a selfie. You got to take a selfie at this concert, and you got to send it out. Oh yeah. Oh uh, well, I'll do it. With I mean, Florida Georgia Line in the background. With all the dumb things I've Hashtag done. Hashtag Backstreet's back. All yeah. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> all right. Is it uh huh or all right? Yeah, I guess it's all right. Um, yeah, I don't. At this point, I mean, I don't, I've met you know a lot of people too, and it's like you know when I went to that AC Honors and I took those pictures, everybody's like, oh, it's so awesome. But like, I was really not like I want to meet Hank Jr. Like Hank Jr. is my man. I know a lot of people like George Strait, and it was cool to see George Strait. It actually was pretty cool to see George Strait. Of course, yeah. But he's not my guy. Like Hank Jr. and right. Like the rowdier guys, like Kid Rock and Hank Jr. and those kind of guys are the guys, the, the degenerates I'd like to meet. Not a classy guy like George Strait and Alan Jackson, right? So, but it was cool. Um, what about Chris? Is, is he is he close? I'd hate to not talk to Chris for a minute too. Yeah, well, Chris is currently inside the whiskey kitchen. Um, <laughs> I'm in the parking lot. Okay. So um, <laughs> well, so no, Chris is. Chris is doing really well right now. Um, he is, he's done a lot of, uh, a lot of road shows. He's just opened up for, uh, Chase Bryant and, uh, Dylan Scott yeah. at, uh, the Kentucky State Fair, which is really cool. He did Boston and the next week we're going to San Diego. He's going to play there. Um, Chris doing really well right now. He was a Nash Next finalist. He didn't, he didn't make it last week. He didn't move on in the competition, but, uh, he did really well. And, uh, He's got his new song, Kissing, which is available on iTunes, if anyone would love to download it. Um, it's a good song. It's catchy as hell. And um, we're we're doing everything we can. Um, but the biggest thing is he's getting on the road more now, which is really cool. We're starting to reach out to people in a lot of different regions. We're going West Coast next week. And uh, that's really the biggest thing for him is kind of awareness. People starting to know who he is, which is, is really cool. Now, where are you going on the West Coast? We are. We're going to San Diego. He's got two shows at Moonshine Flats in San Diego. Uh-huh. And then we're kind of doing a little drive into Phoenix. So we're going to stop at a couple of radio stations on the way. Uh-huh. Uh, but, yeah, so main shows in San Diego, though. So we're hoping we can bring everybody out to Moonshine Flats on next Friday and Saturday. Should be really cool. That would be, it's just a short drive, probably like uh, two hours on up to Los Angeles. See, I'll just slide up there and see if he can't get on somewhere there while he's up there. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a thought. We're kind of, we've, we've only booked our flight into San Diego. We have not booked our flight back. So we're kind of like 
just being where the wind takes us. Yeah, um, it, it's a nice drive up through there too. So I mean, there's a lot of places out out through there that. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The PCH, the Pacific Coast Highway, is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I used to live out in Phoenix. I think I told you guys that, but yeah. um, so I used to go up to the California and go up that West Coast all the time, and yeah. it's it's beautiful country out there. It's and uh, blocked off right now. So. Yeah, I mean, I, like, obviously, I am there for Chris's career. I do right. all of his social media, which is cool, and uh, so I, like, I'm there for work. However, uh, <laughs> I really enjoy when he goes to places like San Diego. <laughs> what, what, do, what do you do when um, some bar, some lady of the night tweets his account, and you get it instead of, he, of him getting it? Um, honestly, I pretend to be him. Um, <laughs> so if you, if you DM Chris Schrader, you're talking to his girlfriend. Oh, um, <laughs> you just crushed so many girls dreams right there. <laughs> no, Jesus. I you know, most, for, for the most part, it's really genuine people who just want to know when he's playing and whatnot. And he has a really, really solid fan base. Every once in a while you get a girl who's like, I'm in the crowd, come see me. And then I just don't respond. I mean, there's uh, whatever, you know, <laughs> Um, you don't DM her a picture of you back whenever you do that. If you like Chris Schrader, I I am behind I am behind his social media, so just heads up. He yeah. lost twenty five <laughs> followers automatically when this uploads. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, screw this! I'm not sending him any more DMs. <laughs> um, yeah, the kissy faces and everything they're fun, but uh, you're not going to get a response. So. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so you're you're going to be a, a personal trainer and tour manager here the next time we talk to you. Look, you know, I'm just doing everything I can, DK. <laughs> I hear you. Yep. Uh, well, I was hoping we'd make it down. I had my, my kiss and tank top already cut, ready for the Nash, Nash Next last week. I was disappointed I, I didn't get to wear my kiss and tank top to the show. Have we yet? <laughs> Do what? Have we gotten you a shirt yet? Uh, no, but I mean, you missed the irony that I said the kissing tank top. No, I yeah. thought, no, you're a kissing tank top. I'll get you one. We got them in 2X. <laughs> hey, what kind of bullshit is that? I got a, I'm an extra large. <laughs> Don't act like you cut out now. Yeah, that was good. That was real good. Huh? That was real Thanks good. For having me. I said I'm an extra large before you get off here. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, I'll get you one of those. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that was really. I don't good. know why we got to go like that. Yeah, that was a. Uh, that I'm was sorry, my song was ringing. I didn't know what you said. That was oh. perfect. You cut out it like you dropped the mic and walked off when you said 2X. It was real good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deleting this number and unfollowing you on Twitter since we get off here. <laughs> Bully. Well, hey, we appreciate you calling us in tonight, and we appreciate having you on all the times so you've been yeah, on here. Great anytime. guest. We appreciate it so much. We may be back. We may be calling you back here in a little while. All right. Well, whenever you come back, I'll still be here. Good deal. All right, well, maybe we'll uh, right. hopefully see you soon at the uh, the concerts. Let me know. Okay, sounds good. All right, bye. All right, bye, y'all. See you. Two X. I cannot believe she said I just told her <laughs> I lost weight, and she's still going to hit me up on them two X. Yeah. What was you before? Exactly. What ago. was I wearing? I was wearing like a long dress, I guess, <laughs> maternity <laughs> pants, and I guess. Any comment on that, James? No, that's funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, it did sound like that. Like It sounded like she said, I got a 2X for you. Bob, Boom. Drop the mic, walk off. Walk back in the whiskey kitchen. <laughs> yep. I, I knew we couldn't talk to Chris because he, he was... Well, first off, he don't respond to his text about every four days. <laughs> well, apparently it's because she's, <laughs> <laughs> she, she's doing it. And that's why. Uh, she's such a cockball. <laughs> that is bad. Like you delete, I'd, I would... Well, I guess in that position, if you're trying to build a following, you can't mess with the girl's back, but you at least got to send a, like a kissy face back or something. Yeah, but it'd be a little bit different if she sent her kissy face back to him. It might stop, it might stop him right quick. It might not. <laughs> How about that? Well, it's true. <laughs> yeah. In this day and age, as we said earlier. Yeah, that's right. Got all kinds of stuff going on. Let yeah. me see if... Uh, Can we get a hold of Mickey Ryan? Let me see if Mickey's got going on. If he's, he just said okay. Hello? Hey, Mickey, what's going on? Not much, man. What's up? Not much. Uh, I, I hope that okay meant that it was okay to call. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get my son to go to sleep, oh. and I'll get back to him in a minute. What's going on? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's... uh. I don't know how it is at the Ryan household, but sometimes it lasts about 30, 45 minutes here at the Hickman household getting the boy to go to sleep. Yeah, and that seems to be getting worse by the day. <laughs> how old is yours right now? He's two. Yeah. Go lay down. 
in your bed, son. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> well, he's hey, almost three, so, so yeah. he feels like he knows everything about everything. Oh yeah, I've got an eighteen-month-old. Is the is the terrible twos as as legit as as it seems to be? Well, my daughter didn't get terrible until she was three. And she's eleven now, <laughs> but now he's been plenty terrible at two for a <laughs> lifetime. So. Okay. <laughs> Well, mine's been plenty terrible for about six months. I was I was dreading the dudes coming up. So, um, well, we just wanted to call out and get in touch with you tonight. Well, you know, you've been a fantastic guest and a um, been just great on the show every time we've called you. And tonight's going to be our last show for now. Uh, it may not be the last one we put out ever, but for now, we're going to take a little bit of break. We just want to reach out to you and tell you thank you for coming on. Thank you for all the good content and everything. Oh man, ha- happy to do it, guys! Um, a whole lot of people like you guys who are out there doing good stuff and doing good work and entertaining people and informing people. It's that's the same thing we try to do on Three HL. So yeah, I'm always happy to jump on with anybody who's trying to do that same thing. Absolutely, and, you know we're, we're like I said we I've told you about our location a time or two, and you know we'll we might have our buddies from the area one week. We might have a musician that we we really dig, or you know some weeks we'll. We'll dip into guys like you and, you know, Bernard Pollard's been on and Keith Bullock was our guest last week, actually. So, um, we tried That's to big time. It, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, how's, how's the new three HL going with Don and, and you guys? Uh, I missed the ventriloquist act the other day. I'm going to have to find that online somewhere. Well, she didn't do the act, but she just informed us that that was, uh, her talent back in her beauty pageant days. So uh, apparently she had a, a guy dummy and a girl dummy that looked just like her. Okay. And they carried on a conversation with her. It's kind of creepy. There's a picture out there <laughs> on the internet. Uh, so, that, uh, so a woman and it, two, two ventriloquist dummies that look exactly alike all having a conversation? Well, her and a dummy that looked like her and then a dude uh, dummy. Mm. So. But anyway, yes, it was very creepy. But uh, yeah, I'll have to. She she has a picture. We'll have to tweet it out from her three HL account so you can see it. But uh, yeah, please do. No, Don's great. Don's great. She has a great sports background, even though she'd been doing news the last few years, and she just jumped right in with us. And she'd been on with us before, so we knew her a little bit. And so when you know when we heard that was the direction that the show was going to go, and we. We miss Blaine because Blaine's great, and I, I loved working with him for three years. But he's killing it on the morning show, and especially yesterday so morning. We were, we, did you what? I said, I said especially yesterday morning. Man, I, I missed that, but I, I, I had some people, <laughs> had plenty of people who who didn't miss it. But uh, yeah. no, he's doing he's doing great on the morning show, and Don's doing great with us. So so it seems like everybody landed on their feet in that deal. Well, awesome. Well, oh, hey, last thing, just to, just tell us, uh, you know, your um, pregame at Tennessee Titans games, of course, with uh, with Blaine and with Kevin Dyson and uh, Mark Howard, and uh, how did it go this past week? You know, kind of just give us a give us a rundown of what you guys do there pregame every Sunday for guys that don't know. Well, for home games, we actually there's a whole setup outside of the north end of the stadium. There's a stage and a band and a DJ. There's a like a mobile bar out there. There's all these Titans activities, and they have kids' activities. It's called the Titan Up Tailgate. So for home games, we get to broadcast out there, and it is nuts. It is so much fun. Uh, for road games, like for the Jags game this weekend, we'll be in the literally the same studio that we all do our shows in. Okay. But, uh, but that's such a fun deal. And... Um, then the post game shows, like I said, we always do back at the at the station. I think there was some talk maybe that would go somewhere, but it's just so much easier to do it in the station and take people's phone calls, and we can actually hear what's going on and that kind of thing. So they kept it there. But uh, pre game was everybody was pretty positive and feeling good, but man, we got some <laughs> we got some <laughs> yeah. some crazy phone calls in the post game. I think there were a lot of people who were really sad after the game, people who were upset, but yeah. it was one game against a, you know, a playoff caliber right. Raiders team that won 12 games last year and probably going to win 12 again. So I, yep. I think uh, I think think there'll be a, a much better Titans team to hit the field this week. Uh, yeah, I hope so. And I, I heard the calls. I, I actually got pretty entertained. I went. I come to the game, me, me and my wife went to the game, and we was listening to you guys on the way home. And, man, I forget the one guy's name, but he was very upset. He was a, he sounded like a younger guy, and he was – 
he was very upset and he was tired of the same old Titans crap. <laughs> and yeah, you guys were speechless because he never really gave you a time to answer back. He just said, I'm, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it. And you guys were like, okay, well, hope your day gets better. <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, but, we have, we have eight lines that people can call. And all eight lines were full until we had to go off the air at five o'clock. Wow. Yeah. So, that's and that's a lot of times we'll be full at the beginning of the post game show. I, I've never, this is my second year, only my second year to do it, but we've never had eight lines full. So that was the 20, well, I did 20 last year, including preseason and four this year. It's my 25th one of those that I've done. And that's the most phone calls we've ever gotten in a post game show that I've done. I was I was generally surprised because people acted like we lost to the Jets like forty five to ten or something. You know, it was I mean, like you <laughs> said, it was Oakland and they'd won twelve games and I even told my wife and I hate to admit it on air, but I said, We're gonna lose this game. I said, I feel it's a winnable game. But I picked the Raiders like twenty four to twenty one to win the game. I said, you know, they're they're just a year ahead of, of development of of the Titans. You know, Carr's got a year on Mariota, and he's got m- more chemistry with his wide receivers than Marcus probably does right now. And uh, I tweeted out after the game. I said, hey, Titans fans, you know, come off the ledge. It's one game against a playoff team, and so there's there's a guy that follows me, and I'm not sure who he is. I don't I don't think I've met him. I don't I don't follow him, but and his his uh, profile picture is not even like. I don't. I can't even tell what he looks like. It's something, <laughs> some other character. He's like, no, fire Malarkey. He must go. And I was like, dude, chill out. <laughs> it's one game against the Raiders. Well, it's funny. Blaine and Dyson played with the guy whose nickname was Almost, and I, I just started even to to Blaine and I have talked about him so much because we've been on the show with each other. But for Dyson, you know, we just do the pre and post game with him. And I started to describe him to Blaine, and before I could finish, Dyson said his name. Mm. He goes, I know who you're talking about, almost. And so, you know, they, they almost, just almost broke a run, and, you know, almost completed a couple of big passes, and almost made that other field goal at the end. It was just a lot of almost. <laughs> and the Raiders are a team who, like you said, they're, they're a year ahead. They, when almost happens, then then it always works out. They don't right. have the almost make it. They do make it. So, um, you know, the Titans have got to tighten up their time, uh, timing a little bit more on offense. And that was something Rhett Bryan and I talked about some of the preseason. We'd always do a Facebook Live after every training camp practice. And, and I said a couple of times and even asked Mariota about it. I think it was after the second, either right before or right after the second preseason game. I asked him about the timing because it looked off to me. And at that time, he said, no, no, you know, I feel good about things. And we're picking up all of Coach LeBeau's blitzes in practice. And I, I feel like we're good. But uh, you could tell their timing was still a little bit off. Now, part of that goes to, you know, Eric Decker went a stretch without getting any practice snaps. And Corey right. Davis wasn't out there getting any practice snaps. And Todd J. Sharp went a long time and he didn't get any practice snaps. And, you know, then he got what, a few days of practice in a preseason game and hurt his foot again. So Marcus was working with a lot of unfamiliar guys and shuffling guys in and out with injuries. So I get it. But, uh, you know, they'll get in a groove, especially having Corey Davis back. And I think Rashard Matthews is going to pick right up where he left off. And Johnny Smith's only going to get better. And Delaney Walker is Delaney Walker. And I think DeMarco is probably still a little bit slow from his hamstring. And once he's 100%, you know, I think DeMarco is one of the best in the business. So I, I, I hate that they lost the game, but I'm not worried about the rest of the season. Don't I, Can you imagine the phone lines if they lose to Jacksonville? If they lose to Jacksonville, we won't even be able to get off. The phone <laughs> it's Saxonville, by the way, you know, anyway. <laughs> hey, the way they looked yeah, against that's Houston, that's a, that's a real thing. Jacksonville looked yeah, good you against have one Houston. Good week. Yeah, one good week against a bad team. Well, a team that looks at least really bad on offense. And yeah. you name yourself Saxonville? Come on, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and, and Houston doesn't have Jack Conklin and Taylor Lewan, so they're not going to have 10 sacks this week. So I hope not. Well, I don't see that happening. You know, Khalil Mack is the defensive player of the year, and he had one sack. Uh, I think half of one. Maybe he combined with somebody on it, if I'm not mistaken. So. Yeah. 
All right, Mickey, we'll we'll let you go. We'll let you get get in there and get that kid to sleep. But uh, yeah, like I said, we uh, re- we really appreciate it. It's any time that you you were able to jump on with us, it it meant meant a lot to us. Well, it means a lot that you would ask me. I appreciate the support, and you know, I know it's hard to. Man, I, I did broadcasting part time for well from the year two thousand until the year twenty. No, I'm sorry. From 97 until 2010, mm. I was 13 years, and I did stuff part-time. I either did freelance TV for Fox or for Channel 4, or I did a show with Brent at midnight on The Zone, and I still work my other job, and I know how hard it was. So, you know, I appreciate guys like you who work your butts off, and then you do something like this, too. And I know when you got kids and got a life, you know, sometimes life gets in the way, but uh, you guys do good work. and. It's always fun talking to you, and you always know what you're talking about. So I know all the people that listen, you know, they'll just be waiting for you to fire it up again whenever you get ready. All right. Well, all righty. Well, I appreciate those kind words, Mickey, and I'll, uh, I'll see you at the game soon. Yes, sir. We all holler at me when you see me, okay? Always good to see you. Thanks, right. Mickey. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. Felt bad that we took him away from his kid there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> know how that goes. Yeah, I do, too. I was, I was just upstairs my... I went and got that water, and my poor wife was sitting there, there looking tired, and that little boy crawling around wide open right now. <laughs> he ain't been working all day. He's been napping. <laughs> you don't let him nap that long. That's that's the key to that. Yeah, he's at uh, daycare all day long, and they, <laughs> they let him nap. Uh, all right, so we'll, we'll lead some more, uh, read some more tweets, Facebook posts here. Uh, okay, we got to Chad Flat. Um, really like Sherlyn Prophet's comment here. She says, uh, First, Doug Martin says, I can't make it. I'm in Mexico. <laughs> Congratulations, Doug, on finding a woman that would marry you. <laughs> For, first and foremost. And she's not like a, you know, she's not a bad looking girl. I don't know, Doug, so I don't know. Douglas. Sherilyn Prophet, I'm truly sad about this. I mean, this podcast brought Springers together with T-Villians. North Springs meets Solana, um, meets Cookville, meets Gas Hauler Road. You guys did all that. I had great ideas. I share with DK to do on the podcast, and I'm just sad. And the live music on there and guests, I will have to catch up on some, but going to miss it, guys. You all did great. That was nice of her. Sherilyn's one of my favorite people ever. She's a, she's a cool person. Sherilyn's mm-hmm. real cool. And she did have some good ideas. I can reveal it. She wanted to play the, the newlywed game. And what, what, not truly newlywed, but she wanted me and Lindsay to pair off against Lucas and Kara. And I can't imagine the, the dysfunction. That would come out of this. I, I highly doubt that would have. You know, <laughs> on that, my side, that actually sounds like a lot better show than you would think. No, I think it would have been. Oh, a blast. I think it'd been fantastic. I think it'd been blast. Even got a few more people in. Like I don't know. I oh, think, absolutely. Yeah. I think people I think would it be been, very interested. Brought in you and Sarah in. I, I mean, I loved it. it. They would have yeah. been. That would have been great. Hey, that we could also we could even do it on like a, another avenue of some sort. Even if we did wanted to do it later, we could do it on some something. Yeah. Um, I don't know how. We, oh, you could just broadcast that. You could do it on Facebook Live. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something <laughs> like that. Like, people would love that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, uh, I think it would have been great. Uh, I love the idea. I run it by Lucas at the time. He's like, I, I don't think Carrie would even talk on microphone. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that she would have uh, got on here or not to do it, but. Oh, and Lindsay, she can't. She would, she would jump at it because right now we can't get anybody to watch Bayless. So like any chance that she gets is like maybe like get thirty minutes away. Yeah, she's, she's got over. she's got in the wreath business with her mom, and I don't even think she likes making wreaths. <laughs> she just let me keep the boys the other day, and I was like with them like ten hours. I was like Jesus, I Facetimed her like fifty times. Now I feel like the other way around. Like you know, I've been somewhere, and she'd be like, "All right, when are you coming home?" I was like, "God dang it, <laughs> this kid won't quit. Get home." But uh, no, I think it'd been great. I can just you know. There's always a little bit of, because like you said, Lucas Lucas says Lindsay's and me are just more alike than we like to admit. Yeah. Yeah, I think but so. But like when we go somewhere, it's always like, like I told her, she acts like stone cold. I'm like, honey, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, we're here all day. Let's don't get freshman to senior party. <laughs> Five minutes into the game here, you know? You usually don't let her in the game. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, don't act like I'm one of our other friends. You just shut them down early. She's got a... She's got, uh... Take advantage of the time she gets. Well, I get that. I get that. Jordan <laughs> Allen, man, this is definitely not cooler than the flip side of the pillow. Appreciate all the good shows, guys. Can't say enough uh, kind words for all the Allen boys that listens to the show. Uh, Steve Allen, Steve Slim Allen, said he was disappointed in Hank Jr. and wanted to know what I was thinking about that. 
about Hank Jr. new for, Monday Night Football gig. I seen on the news that, the line. I seen on the news that his song new song wasn't all it was cracked up to be. What was that about? I, I didn't I didn't get to see the first part of for, of Monday Night Football, but it's with Florida Georgia Line. So if Monday Night Football has anything to do with Florida Georgia Line, I may consider stopping watching Monday Night. Yeah, Football. it's Hank Jr. doing the Rowdy Friends video with Florida Georgia Line. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I'm not a fan of it either. You know what I'm not a fan of is ESPN thinking they're, um, you know, Fox News now, and they think they're uh, CNBC. You know, hey, guess what, ESPN? You're a sports talk. You're, you're, sports, you're sports. You're not to talk about the war. You're not talking about racism, politics. I mean, get over yourself. Show me the damn tennis highlights. I want to see the Masters. If you got any ski ball, if you got some croquet, some backyard yard darts, I want to see all ping, that. Ping pong, badminton. Ping pong. Put on some beer pong. Maybe some bowling. Roy Munson style. Biatch. Hey, I'm fine with seeing the president <laughs> shake the Super Bowl champions' hands. But now, That's about it. but now nobody's going because we got a racist mm-hmm. racial president. In this day and age, you can't say anything. How how about the double standard that Lin, Linda Cohen, the ESPN anchor who's been there for thirty years, told the president of ESPN that it was getting too political, and she was talk, told to go home and think about what she said. But yet, Jamel Hill can get on uh, Twitter and call uh, our president a racial bigot and everything else, and she just got a little slap on the wrist. I listened to a sports show today that that they talked about that for an hour, and I had no idea what the hell they were talking about. To be honest. Uh, but they were they were going off about it. It's just such a double standard, you know. I don't like Michael Smith. I don't like Jamel Hill. I refuse to watch ESPN on their time slot at five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever it is. That we used to be Sports Center. Now it's them doing whatever. I, I tweeted that one time. I was like, the worst duo in the history of ESPN. I got so many black people that tweeted at me racial stuff. I was like, it has nothing to do with them being black. I just don't like them. Well, they don't talk about sports. They talk about everything else. Do they? I don't watch it. I don't well, I, I do watch it because that's one of the few times I get to take the time to watch some TV is when I first get in from work. And they they really get into everything except for sports. See, that's bullshit. It's, yeah. It's, it's ESPN. Yeah. Get real. Yeah, I flip it, it over to catch highlights and shit. Here's the new Money Night Football theme song. Hey, we got somebody calling here. Yeah, that song was awful anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, well, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hey, Juliet. This is Dustin and Lucas here at the podcast. Hi, Dustin. How are you How doing? Are you? Doing good. How are y'all? I'm great. What's going on on your end? Well, we are actually having our last show for the for now, anyway. And uh, we were a uh, we're a podcast that does um, local music, up and coming artists, and we talked a lot of football, a lot of Nashville scene stuff. So we've talked a lot of the Nashville Titans, a lot of up and coming musicians around Nashville and stuff like that. And uh, that's pretty much the gist of the show. Pretty much just uh, pushing the Nashville scene and local scene stuff. Okay, well, wonderful. What, what would you like to know? I just kind of got handed a, a phone. I'm not a musician at all. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, well, hey. So, what is your role at the uh, at the Grand Ole Opry every week? Uh, so I sort of am the audience gal. I uh, I warm up the crowd here at the Grand Ole Opry. I get them. Uh, kind of riled up for the show right before uh, the, the red curtain goes up. I, I tell them what the show's all about, who's on the show. I give out some prizes. I uh, call up some contestants during the show as well and get them to come up on stage for some fun and games. So I kind of call myself the audience gal. I'm the fun and games gal. So wow. when I'm up on stage, I'm giving away something or getting people to do something kind of wacky up on the Grand Ole Opry stage, like dance. Ah, you get the people to do stuff out of the ordinary for them. Yep. <laughs> what, who you guys got on the bill for tonight? Tonight uh, on stage is uh, Luke Bryan's here tonight. Okay. Yeah, I thought I'd heard that. Yeah, Luke Bryan, and we've got Randy Owen, who just took the stage right now. He's of the obviously the group Alabama, right? And he's here. We had uh, Claire Bowen and Chip Essence, who are stars on the show at Nashville, and uh, Riders in the Sky as well, and of course Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers are here. So it's a big night. Sold out, and it's a special night because it is uh, St. Jude's Country Cares uh, St. Jude's okay. Opry Show. So, a portion of the proceeds uh, tonight goes to St. Jude. That that is a big big night. Uh, you had one of my favorites on last night with um, Lucas Nelson made his Opry debut last night. Correct? Uh, who? Lucas Nelson, Willie Nelson's son. You know, I if he did, I'm going to take your word for it. Last okay. night was. Just- Crazy show. Uh, no, last night was not. 
trying to think last night. I'm getting all my nights together, but if you say so, then I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, I, I don't remember last night at all. There was a telephone last night. I got you. And uh, it was such a wild and busy night that I was running around most of it. I thought I saw that on, on his Instagram page this morning, but I, I could have been wrong. But um, yeah, we, I love. Yeah, I don't. I don't recall that, but. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I talked to Ms. I talked to uh, Chip Eston just a couple weeks ago. He's a super nice guy. He is. He's always got a smile, and he's he's great here. He's great, kind of when I when I when I say off campus as well. Like when you see him, he's around town. He's always really great with people. I, I think just the people person, and he's really cool with anybody, no matter where he is. He's just always got a smile on his face. He's real friendly to fans. He's really he's a really neat guy. Boy, and Clara Bowen, she's just a pile of talent wrapped into one thing, isn't she? She's just she can do just about anything. Clara Bowen is so talented. Oh yeah, my she's a little she's a little bit more quiet. She's really sweet. Yeah, the really sweet demeanor about her is just so talented. Yeah. Well, hey, we appreciate you jumping on here with us. We won't we won't take any more of your time, but you go out there and get that crowd hopped up and uh, ready for Luke. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Y'all need to come out here and visit the Green Lake soon. Thank uh, you very much. I sure will. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, all right, well, thank you to uh, Hannah for hooking us up with that call, and uh, maybe we'll hear from some more people throughout the night at the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, read some more listener things. Uh, Tammy Henson says, "Oh no, really?" She, Tammy had just actually told me at work yesterday she really enjoyed it. She's uh, her husband is Sheriff Marty Henson in Jackson County, uh. so that always scares me what I say now. <laughs> thinking about it, I'm just kidding when I say I crack that beer open. <laughs> I'm leaving the after the, after I leave the bridge. Uh, I'm just kidding. Carol Phillips, uh, relation to Mac, he said, "Oh no, really enjoyed listening to the podcast. You guys are awesome." And Shane O'Keefe said, "Really, really, all y'all needed was one more cowbell." I tell you. <laughs> so I need more cowbell. <laughs> well, we're about to get on the phone with our third member of the team, unofficial third member, unofficial third member, we, Josh. We've been trying Cucumber to get him Kennedy. on the daggum podcast since episode one and he's it's took us damn folding up shop to do it so and that was about 30 minutes ago when he texted me that so hopefully he's not in bed already he's at least in our time zone now yeah yeah what's up josh kennedy yes sir what's up buddy you guys doing all right we're doing good man how are you doing I'm oh, doing pretty well. My, life, man. my smile is so big right now. It Mine was too. so big. Because you answered. <laughs> I got I look like I had that AJ Craggett smile going on where I got more teeth than most people. <laughs> <laughs> I let it ring an extra few times just to make you guys nervous. So. <laughs> yeah, it did make me nervous. It did I guess me that's too. What I, I thought, smiling. well, he ain't right. He ain't gonna answer tonight. Hey, we got James <laughs> we got old James Hatcher sitting in with us too. All I've right. Not, What's up, James? I've not seen you in years. I don't know, man. It's Lucas' been a long wedding, time. I think, may have been the last time. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, probably so. You ain't been around to Clay County a long time, but you've been. Uh, you've had a lot of traveling you've done over the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. How afraid were been you? A few states. <laughs> yeah. How afraid was have you been to be on this show the last sixty five episodes? I wouldn't say afraid. I just didn't know when my time was coming. <laughs> Although, I have to say that, uh, I don't know if you guys saved the best for last, or you just figured if this is the last one, what the hell? <laughs> no, this is the best for last, brother. <laughs> so, let's give a let's give a backdrop here. Let's give a let's give a short backdrop for people that that uh, that wasn't a short joke either. No, 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 absolutely not. We've we've burned those with Mackie every time he's been on here. So, yeah. um, right. you, want, you want me to do it? Yeah, go for it if you're too. <laughs> well, <clears throat> living in the Ken- Kennedy family wasn't easy. Me and Dustin grew up wearing Oshkosh. And- <laughs> 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 no, nah, maybe you should do it, man. I'm just going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was me and Cucumber were beautiful friends. One the year of the college, we were inseparable. Then I introduced him to Lucas, and Lucas kicked me out of the goddamn <laughs> Circle and they, they were best man at each other's wedding after this. Or not at your wedding because Curtis was. So that, that was the long story. Me and Cucumber were inseparable. I was like, hey, there's this guy, Lucas. He's all right. He kind of sucks sometimes, but he's, he, yeah, he's all right. He's a good guy. And Cucumber was like, oh, yeah. And I saw the, the passion in their eyes, but I was like, did I just lose my best friend? You son of a, you know, whatever. And, did that uh, just happen? I, I don't know if you even remember this, Josh. I don't know if you remember this, but y'all remember coming to the musical? 
<laughs> in Hermitage Springs my senior year. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that was the first time I ever met Josh. Just randomly at a uh, at a high school musical in Hermitage Springs in 2003. I don't remember that. I mean, I vaguely remember that. Yeah. I remember it, man. It was poetic. It was a musical. You know, we kind of locked eyes and <laughs> yeah. started walking towards each other and you yeah. know, all the good stuff. So. We've Maybe. been to hug it ever since. <laughs> Maybe I blocked it out. <laughs> I remember like there was a Martina McBride song and y'all just locked eyes and that was yeah. it. And then I thought, what did what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> when I figured this would go south, I didn't know it happened this quick though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you throw one forty at a man's head and he leaves you for the next guy. You know, I wasn't even going to bring that up. I, I thought about bringing that up, and I wouldn't. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> and who in the hell's got a 40 just randomly laying around the house anyway? Clint Frehley must have been there. Uh, it could have been us yeah. playing Edward 40 hands. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I've never seen two people get more uh, get more excited or uh, mad at each other playing sports as you two did whenever we were in college. I played sports. Oh, well, not sports. I'm sorry, sports on the video, like PlayStation. Oh, <laughs> that was some NBA street knowledge back then, I guess. Yeah. So we broke cucumber in like cucumber was in the fraternity with us, um, or with me. Um, uh, so let's see that first year, two thousand two. Um, oh, hold on a second. Um. But yeah, so I'm sorry, we can edit this out. I was reading a text. But, uh, <laughs> so we, we meet, meet Cucumber, and I didn't really stick with a lot of guys that we were in that fraternity with, but a lot of cool guys. Me and Cucumber hung out a lot. We done a lot of fun stuff that first year. We, we kind of got a little rowdy. Remember messing with those Indians and everything? <laughs> yeah. They were some good guys. Yeah. They were good guys, man. No, and I feel like a lot of people were afraid to talk to them at that time because that was shortly after 9 11. Anybody of that kind of descent, people was afraid to talk to. No, nah, those guys knew how to party, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, we taught them how to party. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what is the large silver container that is sitting on your back porch? <laughs> that's part of the game, man. You make it float. That's, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, we, we hung out that whole first year. Then when Lucas came, it was just like, man, we it probably set us all back a couple years there for a little while. <laughs> That was a good time. It was though. a good time. It was a good time. That was uh, about 10 years too long for all of us, but it, it uh... <laughs> told a story. Hey, we told a story on here one day about, uh, remember those guys that were in our apartment uh, that threw firecrackers on that guy that was, and we had to we had to break it up? Yeah. See, we that's odd when people get in your apartment and you don't even realize. I think it happened at Lucas's because me and Josh were at our, our apartment. I don't. I don't think and then that it, was at my apartment. Then I heard some firecrackers coming around around the way, and we mean Josh went over there, and Lucas had threw firecrackers <laughs> on somebody. Was that what? Is that how it happened? I don't seem to remember that. I, I feel like <laughs> there's parts of this story that just not. I'm just not recalling. Ooh, are, you, are you saying firecrackers inside of a of a house? Inside of an apartment, I believe. <laughs> who in the right mind would do that? <laughs> I don't know who would do that. I also seem to remember somebody taking a a little car and driving it off road and knocking a hole in the gas tank. You remember those guys? <laughs> yeah, thank gosh for JB Wells. <laughs> yeah, thank gosh for JB Wells. I I remember those guys that used to ride up and down um Dixie Avenue after it rained. <laughs> they would see people walking on Dixie going to class and all of a sudden they just they would just splash a big puddle and get people soaking wet. I I can't I can't believe people do stuff like that. I will tell you another one. Um, I was running around campus. I was running around campus one night with somebody. I, I'm not going to name any names, but um, was in the middle of a conversation. You know, we just having having a conversation as we was running, and like mid sentence, the guy goes, "Hey, you ever uh, you ever wondered what a bush tasted like for supper?" I said, uh, "Say it again, please." And just whack shows me right off into a bush while we're running. <laughs> while we're running. <laughs> <laughs> Running down the side of the road. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You guys, you guys sure know how to pick your friends. I <laughs> yeah. Well, and then uh, some, I vaguely remember 
people talking about this that a whole apartment complex power got shut off in the middle of the night. No. And then, <laughs> well, it was there in a thunderstorm, probably. <laughs> <laughs> there was some th- there was some thunder a- after that for sure. I just remember I remember like sitting in our apartment. Um, I forget what we were doing. Um, I think we were thinking about how everybody is probably really stressed out and they just needed a break, you know. And <laughs> if you if you just didn't have to wake up for class the next morning, how much of a relief that would be. <laughs> that one guy hated. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> that one ner- that one nerd that lived in that apartment behind us, it was like on the seventh level of Grand Theft Auto, got pissed because they didn't have a memory card back then and the power went off right on the seventh level. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I remember J- I don't remember James living in that apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play bi- video games, midget. <laughs> <laughs> there it was, I got a midget. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was some good times. Those good in- stuff. And those Indians, man. Golly. You know, all the times that I we talked to them, then they fell in love with Keeley of all people. Um and then it was like seven years later I got their number and they're like and I was at your rehearsal dinner in Knoxville and they called and they was like, Dustin, I'm oh gonna what are you doing, my friend? I said, Hey, I'm up here at Josh's rehearsal. Josh is getting married. Tell him I said congratulations. By the way, how is Keeley doing? <laughs> <laughs> Those were the those are the guys that started Zappos, aren't they? <laughs> started what? Started Zappos, the the online shoe company, wasn't it? I don't know. Are you being serious? Yeah, man. They had so many shoes in their apartment. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time. I remember, I remember walking home from class, and these Indians were pissed because two guys had broken their apartment that was unlocked. I heard, and turned all of their furniture upside down. Even their thirty-seven pairs of flip flops were turned upside and down. Their sli- and their sleeping bags with them in. I think. I remember. <laughs> hey, uh, do you remember? Uh, yeah, whatever I talked you into. Uh, Thinking it would be funny to go to that uh, Fidel party, how funny it would be if we just took a fish that wasn't even cooked <laughs> as the uh, as the uh, meal, and nobody there got it. <laughs> Did you remember that? I don't remember that one. <laughs> I don't remember that either. <laughs> well, there, there was some type of a bringa, you know, everybody bring their own dish to this Fidel party or whatever, and for some reason, I thought, hey, it would be really funny if we just showed up with a fish because we're in college and nobody can cook and we just put a fish in the dish. Nobody got it. <laughs> they didn't care for it. <laughs> That's about as funny as pissing in a fireplace and turning over a bag of trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was not related to anybody else but me. That was me. That was all me right there. Okay, nobody. Uh, and I didn't remember doing that. Lucas had to tell me that like six <laughs> weeks ago. Whew. Oh well. Oh well. How many of those guys you talk to still, Josh? I talked to Joe. Adam Cho. Choate. Yep. Yep. Is that When's it? the last time anybody talked to Ben Cantrell? No, he dropped off the face of the planet. Man. No, man. I added him on Facebook a few months ago. He's on my Facebook. We talked from. Oh, really? We I slid into his DMs for a couple of days. Yeah. How's he doing? I don't know. He's the guy who taught me how to lift weights in college. Miss that guy. Yeah, well, thank you. I don't I, I was I, Well, I, I stopped myself. Is what okay. I did. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's the only one you talked to much is choked? I believe so, man. I saw Rocky. He lives, he lives right around here in uh, Hastings. Yeah, man. In Hastings. Uh, hang out pretty often. He lives about five minutes away from me right now, so. Oh, I wow. say pretty often. That's that's once every six months. So that's pretty often for me to hang out with friends. How, <laughs> that's often for any of us nowadays. How's his right jab? <laughs> I think that it, now? How, how's how's uh, it's Hastings? It's his left jab. Oh, how's his, how's Le- Hastings' left jab doing? Oh, you know what? I haven't caught a left jab in a while. That's good, man. I was hoping he quit that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not saying we haven't been to that level, just saying he hasn't thrown one. <laughs> yeah. That was so bad, man. He'd be like, come on, hit me. Hit me. And I was like, I don't want to hit you, Hastings. I, I just, 
I like the game. I like the game. Just unfortunately, it always happened as you were driving down the road is when the game got started. <laughs> well, that's because you always elected to be sober driver, though. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's as, why I never heard that game for. <laughs> as you're driving down the road, hit me. Whack. Uh, hold on now. We can't get started while we're driving. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was a good game. When are we going to get you down here? I don't know, man. <clears throat> This guy, I think it's up. I think it's up and over there, isn't it? Yeah, this guy's. This guy works five days a week, and then on call all weekend. He can't get away from Nashville. We uh, we dropped the ball on Lucas the last time all three of us were together for a long period of time. I think, or not the last time. You got you guys come down from my mom's funeral and hung out for a little while, but we acted. We were together that night, uh, but the time before that was my birthday, I think, and Lucas drove us to Brimstone, and we took a nap on him. <laughs> that was just be, that, that was just, sounds that sounds about right these days. Yeah, yeah, and that's all it was. We were just we were sleepy. I think that's that's the sad part about it. I was just talking to Alyssa before you guys called. And I said, "Man, I wish they'd hurry up. I'm, I'm about to fall asleep." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, man. That's what I was afraid you had fell asleep when, when you gave me the suspenseful seven ring of death there. No, no, man. If you can fit me in on your last show, shit, I'm gonna stay up for it. <laughs> well, good, yeah. well, good. We're well, uh, we love, we would love to see you though. Uh, either us coming up there, you coming down here, uh, something. How is it? Listen, how's the kids and everything? Give us an update on the kids. Oh man, they're good. Kids are wild. <clears throat> Give Alyssa a hard time all the time. But how they like in Nashville. Well, Oh, it's a good time. Olivia's doing gymnastics, soccer. She's uh, got, uh, was it little, was it uh, mommy daycare two days a week and stuff? So oh. she's having a good time. Sounds good, man. <sighs> Better than Alabama, I'd imagine. Uh, you know, Alabama has has the uh, pluses and minuses. Uh, at least you're in Tennessee. No. Well, man, we appreciate you letting us call you and talk to you for a little while for the last show tonight. What's your favorite James Hatcher memory? Why? I don't know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> That's mine, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm trying to think of one. All I can think of is the closed door that won't open for us when we knock them. <laughs> <laughs> James, Would you remember you probably- that? Now, now thinking back, we is, is uh, he's probably the smartest one of us all. You know? <laughs> yeah. Then, then he found, then he found out what we were doing about two years later, and his his life just opened up immensely. He's like, this is what I've been missing <laughs> yeah. out on. Yeah. Yep. Well, no comment. No, James, James on you didn't hear on that microphone. He said, "No comment." Man, you mentioned you mentioned uh, Fraley earlier. He has he been on the show? No, nah, we've been actually told not to talk about Clint Fraley on this show. <laughs> actually, actually, we're told not to mention his name on here. <laughs> and it's and it's such a and it's such a trouble for him to. Uh, it's such a trouble for him to uh, listen to this show. He's like, "Hey, I heard Jay said I was on the show. Uh, what what uh, hour? What what what's the time? I'm on there, so I can fast forward, hear the story. You better not say anything you shouldn't have said." <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say I like that guy, and I hadn't heard him on. <laughs> I listen to most, I, I listened to most of them. I hadn't heard him on. So. Yeah, well, you've heard him on. You just oh, didn't know it because I didn't tell his name. Hey, hey I was gonna say uh, <clears throat> we started talking about running, and pushing you into a bush, man. I was I was thinking about you, Lucas, the other day. Remember we used to have those bicycles, yeah, a piece of the junk. <laughs> we'd ride them once, then we'd have to work on them for about four hours yeah. to get them able to ride again. Yeah, I bought the. You've been on Facebook, that marketplace that they got on there. I know what you're talking about, yeah. yeah. Yard sale. Yeah. Well, anyways, I got on there. Olivia is four years old now, so she wants she wants a bike. Well, I got on there and bought me a new mountain bike for pretty cheap, and then I uh, got one of these trailer bikes. Have you seen them? That hook hook, hook the actual it. bike. Yeah. Yeah. So me and her go riding, man. I was, I was just thinking the other day. I was like, man, I don't know why me and Lucas didn't do this. It'd be so easy just to ride behind him, <laughs> let him do all the work. <laughs> and you could have definitely looked like the kid. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have been a lot different yeah, going over yeah. them jumps, having a bike trailing behind me, too. I know. Yeah. Going down the stairs, yeah. have a little beer holder on the side of it. And it'd be 
<laughs> we should have done that. Let's go back to Tech and do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really, really. Who are these old guys? What are they doing? <laughs> I think about our spring. I wish I wish we could have that spring break that we all went on together. I wish we could all have that back one more time. That was a pretty good. One. That was a good that time. Was. That was that was fun. Remember two thousand four. It was. That was. Uh, let's see. It was me and you guys and Clint and uh, Jim and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jim and Jack, and baby. Doc, doctor, yeah, Doctor Miller was there. Yeah. The funniest, the funniest part about that's when we were. That's when I won't throw anybody else on the bus. It's when I had, was friends with Jim pretty hard, and I, I I remember this because one of our crew was good to funnel some beer. Remember who that was, Lucas? I do. I do. Who was that. it? I I, don't, I can't remember his name right now, but because I was going to say who uh-huh. it was, if you were okay with saying who it was. No, I don't remember. His okay, name. okay, okay, okay. Well, there was somebody that funneled a lot of beer that was very fast at it. And then I was, I was, was it Clint Fraley? <laughs> it wasn't. That's, that's what the fun, that's what I'm getting at right here. We he would pump all the rest of us up. What's funny is we had a room full of two. Like they remember the target, target passed all those little bouncy balls, and we <laughs> jacked them all from our floor. Uh huh. So our room was full <laughs> of like bouncy red and white balls that people would just come jump in. It was like a yeah, just yeah. I mean, there was probably 500 of them in there. It was crazy. Oh man, that that room was filled up four feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just we had random people just coming in our. Uh, they said, "Can we jump? Can we jump in there?" I said, "Hell yeah!" yeah. We yeah, didn't blow them up on. for show. Yeah, get so in people, on that. remember that? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, uh, I had a good. I, I had one of those three dollar ninety five cent jazz cameras, and it took the best three dollar ninety five cent jazz camera <laughs> picture in the history. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody was jumping, somebody, I, somebody huh? threw an umbrella through the room. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> With Freightly. It had, had, had two handles, though. I don't, I don't really get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were spread out as far as a man could get it out. <laughs> Um, the Fraley kept agging it on. We remember we had hung out with those guys from Indiana next door. He's like, "I got any, I got a man that can fund them more beer than anybody." And you're like, "Oh yeah, who's that?" And he's like, "It's this guy." And that guy would funnel out funnel Indiana. Then he's like, "I got a guy that can drink more whiskey than anybody here." And next thing you know, that guy is taking. Whiskey shots. Well, I think it was. It started out with whiskey shots. It was I think. whiskey and vodka. Yeah. That guy had vodka. Yeah. Our person had whiskey. Mm-hmm. Took a shot of each other's. Then they're like, how good can you do with the vodka? And took each other's. Then that person took the whiskey and Clint's like, oh, look at going down his throat. Oh, yeah. He's not even. Oh, he's just drinking it. He's just drinking <laughs> it. Um, yeah. Why well, Clint got out scot-free on all this. Yeah. Yeah, he sure did. He agged us on at ten thirty in the morning. <laughs> I don't think time. it was ten thirty in the morning. I think it's more like one thirty in the morning. Well, it felt like it. <laughs> I've just been up for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. But yeah, Clint got out. He was the only one of age at the time. Really, he was. He was with a bunch of babies. He, yeah, he'd get mad because he'd want to go like Club La Vila or whatever, and we couldn't go. <laughs> he was the only one that could get in. <laughs> so we went to like. Club the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went to whatever restaurant would have us. That was good times. Good yeah. times. But anyway. I forgot about the I forgot about the ball pit. I'm glad you brought that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got those pictures, man. Next time you come down I'll have to uh, bring the um cleanest ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only G rated now. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I've had a, you know how many pictures I've had to throw away from those years? Oh, I do know how many pictures you've <laughs> had to throw away. Just threw them away. Just threw them away. But anyway, but hey, we'll let you go. I know we, we know it's getting late here and it's getting late on our show as well. So Yeah. Yeah. Well I appreciate you guys having me, man. I'm, i hope you're just taking a, a hiatus and get back to it later on. We may months, we may it's um, a it's been a it's been a really good time, so we we might get back to it, and uh, when we got more time, we can dedicate to it. Man, I enjoy listening. I uh, I don't listen much in the truck, but usually I'll binge listen on uh, like Saturday morning before the girls wake up or something. Right. <laughs> but anyways, you wouldn't believe how many parents say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the kid friendliness. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get it in when you can. Right, yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. Hope to see you soon. All right, it was good talking to you guys. We'll see, you, soon. see you, man. See you guys. See you, James. There you, Bye. Cucumber. Don't sound too happy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I just ate one of those strawberries. Sorry, it was still on me a little. Strawberry. Hey, we got some strawberry shine. Seventeen. That's all right. Take me back, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, see you, all right guys. Yeah, yeah. Have a good night. See you, buddy. Right. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, cucumber. That guy's a good time right there. Oh, it's so good. I hope you don't get mad for us uh, alluding to some of the stories that he saw us doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever those people that were that were in it. Yeah, us. I meant people of our age group that were at Tennessee Tech at the same time. Yeah. Got more uh, comments. Not, not me. <laughs> no, you were locked in the bedroom. For a short period of time. Um, let's <laughs> and he come out swinging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt, oh, we just got a we just got a text from Mackie it says, "Well, so let's just talk for a few minutes. We've had a lot of guests. So yeah. let's, let's, uh, He's impatient. Can you say, give me that book, James, please, with my keys on it? What you got here? Nothing. I just wanted to. It kind of looks like a Bible. Uh oh, DK, he's got religion on. Well, I got baptized last Sunday. Did you know it? No, I didn't. No, that's I don't believe it. I didn't. I thought about it though a couple times. Because if anybody needs forgiveness, I seen, I seen on Facebook my little cousin got baptized last weekend. Which one? Haley. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, God, I shouldn't say this, but I just, I wonder about people sometimes that get baptized at such a young age, because they're going to have to do it again, because they're going to do some dumb stuff. <laughs> I, 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 in her defense, she's at least 17. She ain't doing it at like 12. Right. But do you see what I'm getting at when yeah, they're, they're that age? I'm I like, agree. I said, child, I didn't mess up for the first time, and I was 12. <laughs> but I mean, all, all kids aren't like me. <laughs> so I'd imagine the number of times since then. Who? You. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. That's why I said I'm a good candidate to probably make that walk one of these days, take that dip. But, but you don't want the water to catch on fire. <laughs> Can you say the F word anymore when you're baptized? That's my no. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Uh, if you say it, if you say it while you're getting baptized, I think it's part of the ones that you can use. I, I, I say once is one more than most people do. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it, man. You know how many hypocrites are around in this world? Mm. I tell you, a good friend of mine is in church, and boy, we had some good fun the other day up here in the damn Happy Springs Road, Jeremy Hammer, boy. I, oh I, yeah, I, that's my second home. I mean, you know, when I grew up. And I stayed at a lot of y'all's house, you know. That's Hilltop Road, by the way. Yeah, it's not Happy Springs. Yeah. Was, why'd, why'd you call it that? I don't know. I couldn't figure out where you was going. <laughs> I ain't been on these roads much, boys. <laughs> no, Hilltop. I mean, you know, I, I hung out with all you boys. But I tell you what, for Jeremy Hammer's mama talk, took me in. Yeah. I mean, she was so good to us, boys. And she didn't have nothing to worry about with me and Jeremy, really. Well, she likes taking a lost cause. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a... You thought Joe Roberts and Carol was the only one that took in orphans <laughs> in Clay County. Linda took in one too. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, but no, it's just it's great. That's it's the kind of deal with Jeremy. Jeremy knows what he's getting with me. Yeah, he knows I respect what he does now. Uh-huh. You know, he knows I'm not going to get down there and just um, do it in front of the kids. But I got to telling stories, and that was the first time in a long time that I'd been just completely myself in front of Jeremy. And I was telling these stories unedited, and Jeremy can appreciate a good funny story because Jeremy's got a pretty good sense of humor. And Linda, well, Linda was down there. She was crying. I was telling stories about me and Clint and Mackie and uh, some of our old stories. He's like, tell that one on the podcast and tell it tell it right now. <laughs> and uh, his mom was down there daggum, crying. Of course, Anthony's always right. And uh-huh. Leslie. And, I don't know. It was, just, it was just cool. I mean, I, I got to catch up with Elliot. Rode around with Elliot that morning. Yeah. And hauling tobacco with Elliot. I mean, we weren't hauling it in. We were running and watching his Mexicans hauling in. Right. But, uh... <laughs> Then talk to you up here while you was mowing that yard. And uh-huh. It was a cool day. It was a good day to catch up with everybody around here. But yeah, that's that, that's what, like Jeremy was like a lot of you guys. You know, I don't you know, see you very much, but shit, when you do, it's just like taking right off. Yeah, so we had a big old time down there. Till Lindsay got home, she said, "Time are you yeah. gonna be home?" I said, "I don't know." She said, "I'll be home at 6. So apparently, I was supposed to be home at five fifty nine. So I stayed out till eight, pushed the limit. Yeah, and she was all pouty when I got home. I was like. I ain't drunk no beer and I ain't been out with no skank. I said, so you ain't got a right to be mad about nothing. I'm just catching up. She goes, well, it's just funny that you said you'd be home with your family. I was like, and this is why I have friends you don't. Because <laughs> I make sacrifices for my friends. Right. She don't listen anyway. I can say that. Yeah. So let's not get divorced on the last show. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I do, this won't be the last show. Right. Well, we'll be back go. next week. <laughs> just kidding, guys. Yeah. So much for the fond memories. Um. Uh, we do have to thank James, though. I didn't want to make sure I thank Oh, yeah. 
before we shut everything down, I did want to thank James for he gave a small donation there at the first. Uh, yeah. You give that donation to us at the first to get things started. And uh, Dusty Smith and his clay builders, they helped us out at the first. He wrote us a, a good check, too. And uh, so thank y'all. Thank you, yeah. Peckerhead Dusty, for uh, helping out and help buy our t shirts and our koozies and get us ready. Uh, it was the hottest shirts on the street since three, Austin 316, I said. They weren't. Not because the shirts didn't look good. They did not fit worth a shit. I don't, I'm sure y'all they own them. They did, I'm, initially. I'm sure y'all own them, but the material's awful. Well, you know what pisses me off about that? That's not the material I requested when I got them from, uh, from that place. Yeah, and they didn't do anything right to begin with. They either. didn't. Yeah, you being of similar size, I see you can understand how your belly would easily hang out the bottom. Yeah. They, what, they, they what, shrunk up bad. Shrunk Did up you get extra bad. large? Yeah, it don't fit. Uh-uh. Even after the weight loss, it still just doesn't fit right. Yeah. I, I agree, and I've lost mine. It's like it's so weird because those shirts, the two XL looked like it was monstrous on you, and the XL shrunk up. So I don't even I don't wear yeah, our own. And it shirt. was the material; they look great. The, yeah. the look of the shirt is great. But which don't. brings us to our next thing. That was thanks to Chris Rains, who's been we've thanked him multiple times on this show. But sorry, thanked him for for the, the logo, for the logo, the banner, and numerous and playing for us at the music. Yeah, we'll get into this stuff, of course later on the show some of the cool things we've got to do but uh yeah i mean so if we can't get into it much later might as well go ahead and get into it we're already two hours in so we said it'll be a long one no yeah we can't go too too much longer though i've still got to get that kid in bed you'll be time. edited in 30 minutes of that out yeah nah but uh all right well um but anyway yeah we'll call mackie and yeah. uh, we get to our last little things here just saying i've got some more looks like facebook things and there's people liking it. It's not the, all right, let's just call. He's. You know, we want to put a bet on where he's at tonight? I'm going to say he's at Woolies. It's a Wednesday, so I don't know. Is it Spanky's on no, Wednesdays? No, he's he's home. I'll say Woolies. I'll I'm say gonna, Spanky's. I'm going to say home with Marie. Should be on a Wednesday night. Cause it Wednesday. should be. It's Wednesday. I don't know about the weekend and that stuff. It's, it's, the, week, week, it's the week. It's, it's the, the freaking weekend. weekend. Let's get out. Come on, Mackie. There we go. I'm sure his phone won't work. His phone's never worked on the history of first tries. Hello. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Oh, this is the first time this has that ever was, worked on the first time. That was call number one, and it, the, you were you were able to hear us on the first go. The first go round. First go round, buddy. I don't I don't know what's going on, but uh, your dad did sure did get five calls before it worked for him. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's something about the Mackie phones. They don't like us on the first go around, but your dad got to break it in well, for us. I'm sure he was frustrated. <laughs> nah, he, he seemed fine. <laughs> you, act just like on, him. you act just like him, so I don't know why, you act, why you're acting stupid. Oh, I'm acting stupid now? I'm just saying I don't know why you're acting like your dad gets frustrated and you don't get frustrated. Well, obviously I do, so. I will, I will tell you something that I learned about your dad a while ago. He's probably got the best juke in the history of... Uh, in the history of anything, because uh, Dustin asked him a question, he straight answered it and turned it right around into something else. We was just talking about something else, and I, I couldn't <laughs> for life of me, I couldn't figure out how, I, how we got there. I told him, and I said, I, heard, I understand you listened to the podcast, Jeremy's interview last night. We all were together. What was your favorite part? What'd you take away from it? And he answered something. I don't know what in the blue hell he was talking about. It, it was the most beautiful turnaround I'd ever seen in my life because it just flowed right into it, and I thought. Damn, he's good. All, lose, them, all them years of THP, it worked out well for him. I was driving back from that middle, and uh, I had on my on my playlist or whatever I was playing, and uh, he said, I'm tired of hearing that shit. Put it on something I want to hear. I said, you want to listen to the podcast? He said, hell yeah. <laughs> I put on my interview, yeah. and he got, he got to the part about Ronnie Dunn, dude, and I thought this son of a gun was going to piss his belt. <laughs> <laughs> James, you were at part on that show, Mac interview? Mm-hmm. James is mm-hmm. in here with us, too. Where I told about my dad cussing Ronnie Dunn on the television. <laughs> oh, listened you to say that. James was is in there, too? It, yeah, James is in here, too. Was it last week? No, it's been a while. It's back. the interview of Mackie. Like, like I listen to that damn thing. I wonder if I, I did skip a small part of it. I wonder if I skipped that. Oh, I don't know. It was, it was I, pretty, I listened to that episode. Though. It was pretty funny. I was in the floor laughing almost. <clears throat> Maybe I've just forgot. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was hilarious. I, I'm not going to. I, I can't. I'll never be able to replicate that. So you need to try to find it. My, yeah. my mom bitching sure. about the news <laughs> and talking about Ronnie Dunn and my dad just got up and cussed Ronnie Dunn out. 
I'll tell it off air in a minute. Yeah. Well, what are you up to tonight? Hey, we just took a bet on where you're at. Where are you at tonight? I'm at home. Ah, oh, James won. Damn it. Where was you at? James won. James won. Where, where, where were you? Uh, I went to Hibbs and bought me a new pair of shoes. I went to LTAP and ate dinner with my dad in Camden. And then I went home. Uh. You told me you were going to Wooly Bullies when I was talking to you earlier. Well, I may have lied to you. <laughs> well, I just lost a bet thanks to your lies. It, so it, it's Wednesday. I know what goes on on Wednesdays. Our friendship's fractured now because you lied to me and lost a bet. Is it? No. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm at Wooly Bullies. I'm <laughs> right now. You lost, James. <laughs> it's awful quiet. Both been home right now. Big K for but the win. Amanda, um, Amanda needed to ride to Woolies, and I was like, I'll give you a ride to Woolies. Usually she has to wait like an hour and a half for a cab, so. And then I, I got my laundry done, so I'm good. You ever known a, ca- a cab in Cookville to take an hour and a half, James? Yes. Yes, I Dude, have. It, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. On anything But now, apparently, apparently, there's Lyft here in Cookville now, so. Oh, really? I think you should do that. I think, yeah. you should, I think you should leave FedEx and be an Uber driver or Lyft driver. You should just do that of a night. Drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You should I would put, love to be a Lyft driver. I think you should put your own uh, gigolo page up on Backpage.com and be a male escort in Cookville. No, I'm, two, I'm good. Two I'm things. Good. One, that's the best idea I've heard tonight. Two. No, if, it's not. It, no, it's the worst idea you heard, you've heard all night. One, best idea ever, probably. Two, if you're a Lyft, if you're going to become a Lyft driver, I'm moving back to Cookville just so you can, I can yeah. like pay you to drive me around. Best cab ride you, ever. You got to pay me. Oh. You ain't gotta pay me shit to drive you around. Okay? <laughs> it's free, buddy. You can put like on your on your you uh, on your gigolo page. You can say, "Do you want a BBC?" You know how they say BBW for those women. You can put. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about BBW. On, I've never been on Backpage.com, obviously. No, on porn sites. I know you've been on those. And it says BBW. No, dude, I've never been on the porn site. You, sh- you should Ever. be. You should be B. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what that means, James. Yeah, is too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't what I was going. James, James, James just, James just clued DK into the what? What BBC? What BBC? He so, had no idea. No, I was going to say Big Belly Cracker, <laughs> but James obviously has a different idea for what up, BBC means. <laughs> no, no, the world does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I was going to say Big Belly Cracker, but you obviously took it somewhere else, James. I, I tell you what, DK, Google it. Google, yeah. Google the letters yeah. BBC. And you're, you're not doing it on here. <laughs> and we'll see who's right. <laughs> well, I, hadn't, I, ain't, I ain't been in the same site you've been to, James, apparently. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> oh my God. Do you have any idea what BBC really stands for? No. Okay. Come on, Mackie. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not put gonna your, we're not gonna reference. Go on to put, something else. Put your thinking cap on. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Kick us off iTunes? Apparently apparently I'm gonna Google it after I get off the phone with you guys. Yeah. Don't do it in front of people. Yeah. Well it won't yeah, well, I wish you would. Ricky Cherry and uh <laughs> John Mullins might appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um anyway. Yeah. So we so you've this being our last show, I guess, um, we couldn't do it without you since you've been such a vital part, man. That last interview that you had done big numbers. Monster. It was a monster. Well, I'm, I'm glad I could be part of it, guys. Well, we've appreciated it. You've been a hell of a part of it, buddy. Hey, I was down here at Jeremy Hammers. I, was just, I just alluded to this a minute ago before we called. I mean, all, listen, shut up, Dustin. Yeah, I wasn't talking. All the work, all the hard work Lucas put into building that studio down there. <laughs> And your fat ass just sits there and does nothing. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> He's a double XL. <laughs> yeah, I am a double XL. Um, so, well, I appreciate you, your jaded vision that you just threw out there. My what? Nothing. Simpleton. <laughs> Fucking simpleton. My jaded vision. Your <laughs> honesty. <laughs> <laughs> You got uh you're like the king of revisionist history. Just believe it, just whatever you want to believe. <laughs> However you want to tell okay. it. Okay. Um Well, I don't even want to give you this compliment anymore because I was down at my friend Jeremy Hammer's house the day. He's like, you know, I just love that Mackie guy. I've never met him. 
I was like, that's why you love him. <laughs> and he, that's why you love him, yeah. <laughs> he said, I just, I just think that guy is so awesome to be around. I don't know. He's got that right. Well, everybody, well, yeah. Everybody needs a troll in their in their clique. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, just because it's your last podcast, okay, doesn't mean you have to give me shit the whole time. It doesn't mean Jeremy that- Mackey won't smack a bitch right here on the last podcast, especially if she's six years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> undefeated. I told his mom about your about the story, the the epic story. Now that it's almost an urban legend of you throwing your your. Uh, yeah, Already boot. signed Eric Church boot 300 level to the floor to get mm-hmm. signed. Mm-hmm. Dumbass move. Yeah, <laughs> no, I just told a story. It's an epic move it. is what it was. Hey, I don't care what anybody says. The damn boot landed on the stage. It, I've got a picture to prove it. I, I, I'm just saying. All that, all that watching baseball and playing baseball all them years at the... Uh, Really paid off at that Eric Church concert. Yeah. Hey, these two guys are sitting down here drinking strawberry moonshine. By the way, uh, is it the same strawberry moonshine? It is. From, uh, that they was drinking. It, at the it, it is a different container of such, but same idea. Yes. Well, how many strawberries has Hatcher ate tonight? They've That's ate probably. every one of them. All they are. Of them. They are no strawberries left uh, in it. Hey, uh, James, I need to talk to you about uh, <laughs> some, some moonshine sometime. No, I owe Keith Bullock some right now, and he can't even hook me up. I'll tell you how to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't making it. It ain't like it's like you're, we're asking you to make shake and bake for all the crackheads in Cookville. You know, it's, it's moonshine. It's legal now. This ain't Clay County, son. <laughs> Moonshine's Clay legal County. now, so that's, yeah. that's not how it's that works. Okay. <laughs> they sell it at the liquor store. I'll, I'll be honest. Sponsored by Florida Georgia Line. I don't even know how to make moonshine. Like I have an idea, but I've never, I've never even, and this That's is like, gonna, this is gonna be real hard to believe. I've never actually seen it be made. I that, accidentally seen it one time, and the guy told me to leave because I was accidentally seeing it, and I said, "Yes, sir, I sure will." <laughs> oh no! If I ever see it, it'll be intentional, and yeah. because so, I asked to, but I've my, never mine was seen completely it. accidental. So your uncle's got a shirt that says Hatcher's finest or Hatcher's best. That's like growing up in a. House of mechanics, and you don't know how to change a tire. I agree, but when he was making it, and not that he does anymore, no, no, no. But when he was, obviously, I couldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I yeah. was, I was little. I don't know. I was hoping. I don't know these. I was hoping years. that I could make it up there Friday night, though. But you know, I'm not important. Apparently, you can still come up Friday night. You should come up Friday well, night. Can't. I offered DK. I was like, "Once y'all do this Friday night, I got eight dude, kids coming house Friday night. Okay. I just won't be here. You should come up here Friday night." Well, he asked me, I'm, James. I mean, we look, don't care about DK. Come up, Friday, come up Friday night. Well, I mean, we won't be podcasting. Well, I might, well, I may up. do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have eight kids in my house, Ben. You know. Well, ain't nobody, ain't, ain't nobody talking to you. Dustin. You did <laughs> earlier. That's why I, I told you I couldn't. Well, I can Saturday, and I can Sunday. It's whatever. It's whatever. Well, Saturday is Goose's birthday, so I'm out on that. Happy Goose. birthday, Goose from the. Uh, oh well, our from podcast. The, uh, Goose, Goose. Let Goose, she, uh, let Goose, Goose hit she's it on supposed Saturday. To be going, she's supposed to be going skydiving. Dang, which she should. We, we talked about she this asked earlier. Me do it. She asked me to do it, and I said I'm not jumping out of a perfectly fine airplane. I'm not doing it. Mackie, it's an experience you'll never forget. Whoa. Please do it. Hey, I, I tell you what, slapping that ground, it. slapping that ground would be uh, uh something you never remember. Mackie, never remember. why are you scared? To, why are you scared to um, skydive? I saw you twerk. No. I saw you in a handstand twerk before on the side of a wall in Memphis. Well, that's different. <laughs> have y'all ever seen Mackie in a handstand twerking against a wall? I'd like to. I have. It is ultimate. James, James, I was going to say James Hatcher has yeah. in person, in public. I'm telling you, Mackie, go skydive. For anyone who hasn't done it before, please go skydive. You don't know what you're missing. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Will not do it. I'll do a lot of stupid shit. I'm not jumping out of a freaking (laughs) plane. That's been documented. (laughs) I'd like to skydive. I think that'd be fun. Hey, Lucas, I'm telling you, it's one of the best things ever. I don't think... uh... Uh, I think I'm probably too big for somebody to strap onto my back and they may have to double shoot. Are you over 250? I'm right at it. Then you're still good. Oh, really? No, it's it's, it's, it's 240. Mm. We're going to have trouble. (laughs) (laughs) It it wasn't in Smyrna. Get you some mono. It wasn't in Smyrna. (laughs) Yeah. 
Look, guys. It's 240 in Tullahoma. I can, I can, uh, they, they won't weigh you. They'll let you go. I promise. I can jump off the top of a double decker <laughs> pontoon. It feels like an eternity. My heart's racing. Now, hold on. <laughs> hold on. This whole, this whole they're not going to weigh you thing. I'm going to need them to go ahead and weigh me. <laughs> Tell me whether it's going to no, work or not. Yeah, not I don't need my feelings hurt when yeah. I'm about to die. It's, if, if I'm about to jump out of an airplane, I ain't lying to nobody. It's not a safety <laughs> issue about that. It, it's more about them them landing you, like how the how, safely, right? No, softly, <laughs> softly, yeah. not safely. Well, they're yeah. killing me softly. Well, they're professional. The Fuji's. I mean, so. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm telling you, you yeah. need to do it. Anyone who hasn't done it, go do it. Yeah, well, well, I'm not doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, I'm with you, Mackie. Lindsay's wanting to do it. I'm waiting. We got our our insurance policy is golden now, so uh, it doesn't cover skydiving. Good luck. Are you there shitting? You go. I swear to God, it does not cover skydiving. Lot no life insurance. Does. Well, God, when I'm canceling. <laughs> yeah, we we done it in July one year, and it was so much fun. We turned around. It was for a charity. We turned around and done it again in September. Oh, huh, really? And took more people with us because it even was, an Indian on on nine eleven. We went for Sasha's birthday it's on 9 I swear we did. Happy birthday, Sasha. It pops up on my Facebook every year. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Today is today. It is his birthday today. today. Big shout out. Happy birthday, Sasha. I've already told you twice, but hell, third time can't hurt. That's right. That's right. I had a Facebook memory pop up this morning of all of us wasn't playing golf that one year. and Oh, God. DK that was, was so uh, much fun. Yeah, and DK was commentating over at the football field and gave a big shout out to him. Yeah, no, he gave a shout out to us. Yeah. What'd I say, uh, Yeah, I remember saying something. Yeah, like you remember. I don't know, and you're like, all the people were, all the people were in Jackson County, like, who the hell is Sachin? (laughs) I used to, who the hell saw some chowdery around here? (laughs) Ain't no, all we got is Huffines and Casties down here. We don't need no damn Indian. (laughs) Unless he's going to run our marathon or Texaco. (laughs) He's in the country cabin. That golf trip was a lot of fun, though. It only took us about six hours to play nine holes of golf. <laughs> That's about how I play. I said we, I said we all have a, another golf outing. Hey, I don't even play I mean, anymore. But you let me know. You got to. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm in. I got to see a handstand twerk every three holes, and I'm in. I'm down. Three holes. I'm, I'm thinking like every. I'm down for like nine. At least one. Oh, one. every one. <laughs> I'm down for nine holes. I, I about lost it. I'm, I'm one beer per hole. Everybody's good by hole seven. I'm mar- <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not down for that, but I'll play some golf. Well, let's go. <laughs> uh, man, I had I had such a dirty joke. I had right there just on the tip of my tongue, and I just let it go, Luke. Okay. You'll be happy. Let it go. Wanted that so bad right then. <laughs> it's anyway. <the> last show. <laughs> <laughs> Did it have anything to do with Luke's been down for nine holes? <laughs> <laughs> it was something similar. Yeah. <laughs> It was something similar, <laughs> but you can imagine. After your BBC comment, I don't know how you withstood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Maggie. I about lost it. No kidding. I forgot about the twerking, man. I, we were in Memphis, and he just pulled up on a wall. He was like, hey, uh, I, 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 I can twerk. I said, no, I believe you. He goes, no, no, no. Hold on. You, you got to record this. Next thing I know, he does like a half cartwheel in the bar and backs himself up. <laughs> And Torx all up on an innocent wall. It felt dirty. I I put sanitizer all over the wall when he walked off. <laughs> Jesus. And then we went to the restaurant and me shirtless. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, "Can he be in here like this?" And they're like, "Drunk." And I was like, "No, like you know, all chest naked. Like he's he's you know got his shirt tucked down, like I'm buttoned down like Jimmy Buffett." And there's like one buff. <laughs> One at the bottom, still button. What made him think he was drunk? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, Mac, let's leave our tab. Let's go. Uh-huh. Well, I'm like finishing my burger. Look out on Bill Street, and he's like, hands going, let's go. You know, Come I'm on. like, Come I'm on. kidding, Mac. Get back I'm in ready. here. <laughs> it was a fun trip to Memphis. Memphis I is always fun. I love Memphis. People can hate on Memphis all they want, but. A lot of BBCs down there, but man, it's a good time. It, it it was a fun trip. Yeah, it was, man. I miss that. I miss those days a little bit. You know, if you know what I'm talking about. Well, y'all have children now, and yeah, you do too. You got a new girlfriend. I do have a new girlfriend. I mean, it's two years. I don't think it's new anymore, but. Well, it's not new. It's almost two years. No sense then. And she does have, and she does have a child. So, but we we have every other weekend. We yeah. can still do it. 
Hey, I seen Mackie being a good daddy last week, which is something I never thought I'd see. Oh, yeah? What was he doing? He was, like, with the kid, doing kid stuff. No kidding. What? Most of time I tell him, I, he's the reason I stay married to guys like him. <laughs> <laughs> All around my kid. <laughs> it's a joke, Jeremy. Dude, we, I, I'm not bad. You're not great either, but we'll call it the middle. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still new to this shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah, here you've been good to Waylon over the years. You got anything for yep. that or not? <laughs> no, apparently, no, not. apparently, apparently, not. apparently not. Okay. not. Nope, it's good. You taking a Vegas bomb while we're talking? No, I'm not doing any. I'm waiting on y'all. No, I mean, what? You, I'll take a Jaeger bomb. Well, I can't buy you one from here. Doesn't tell you the truth. I mean, I'll buy my own from here. I mean, Henry. <laughs> there are only two in the bar. On Wednesday. Yeah, guarantee it. There might be some old. Hey, there you might, bomb? There might, some, might be some old broad with b- bouffant hair in the back, smoking a misty slim or a Salem. He really was at Woolies. Oh yeah, no yeah. doubt. There is nobody here, really. Yeah. How's that? How's that make you feel about your life right now? There's probably <laughs> maybe ten people in here. That's an overstat. Like three Give, gives me some. No, there's, no, there's literally like ten. There's a table at least seven. Right now. I want to hear that Jaeger bomb hit the table, and I want to hear it guzzling down your throat for the One Lane Road podcast. There used to be at least 60 people in the Yeah. James Hatcher owned that place, and I bought, brought music in. That place was rocking and rolling, Daddy. Hey, yeah, James well, Hatcher owned that place. We brought our own beer and shit in. <laughs> That's not accurate at all. <laughs> I, that I, is very accurate. I always uh, try that until they... I brought a cooler in here one night, and Steve-O tried to, like, you can't bring that in here. I was like... Well, I've done text hatching. He said it's fine. He said, well, it's his bar. <laughs> what night was that? Where the hell was I? <laughs> April the 15th. <laughs> uh, I probably, I don't know. Um, you didn't text me about that. <laughs> no, but uh, Steve-O hey, Steve didn't, didn't know that. You agreed to it. <laughs> <laughs> but you agreed to it, so that's all that matters. That's why beer sales were down that night. wonder where I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> hell, you may have been here. No, you weren't here. I'm, no, you were just done it in front of me. Remember those times those He's probably you was probably at McDonald's ordering five hundred fucking chicken McNuggets. Mm. God, what I'd give for some of those right now. <laughs> remember those times those people I, those I remember the, that group of people that used to go to Woolies and sit in the corner and play quarters at three o'clock and they'd look up and the band would be playing at eleven thirty and they didn't know it they didn't know that the band had started. We played many quarters in here. All right, guys, I have a Jaeger bomb in my hand. And I'm, I, I like to cheers you to the One Leg Rolling Podcast for, uh, what is it, 65 weeks now, maybe? 66 episodes Six. today. Well, well, here you go, okay? Bam. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> Done. You take uh, so long. If I, I, look, I we appreciate well, that. Well, first of all, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. We love the love. I love your love the most, as Eric Church would say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gay. You're gay. Dude, there is three old broads here, right? I'm talking they are rough. <laughs> rough for the night in jail? Uh, twice rough. Hey, hey. If, if you had to give them on a scale of one to ten Jager bombs, what would you give them? Uh, one. You would have you'd have somebody after one Jager bomb? <laughs> no, 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 no. You said I misunderstood your question. I said one to ten. You said one. No, no, no. It'd take probably thirty. <laughs> no, no, that's ridiculous. Hey, challenge, Mackie. <laughs> thirty oh, well, they're, Jager bomb. They're leaving right now. No, no, no. Get get right one of their now. phone numbers. Get get one of their phone numbers. <laughs> no. Take twenty nine more Jager bombs and give them a call. Put them on the podcast. No. Negative. <laughs> Negative. Get strikers. get one of them on the podcast right now. You want to talk to one of them? You're damn right. Yeah, we do. Okay, Lucas. well, hang on just a second. Okay. We want to know what's going on at Wooly Bullies on a Wednesday night. Yeah, we do. Okay, well, no, they're they're out of here. Oh, you puss. <laughs> no, hey, well, I I would talk to John Henry Hall. No, 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 we're good. We're good. Oh, Henry, no, no? no just tell Henry what's yeah, up. We got. Henry, oh, come here. <laughs> Hey, yeah. All right, just ask Henry on scale one ten if it's bad. Okay. What? What are you? What? What's going on? 
how many Jaeger bombs would it have took Mackey to hit on those three broads that just left the bar? How many what now? Jaeger bombs would have took Mackey to hit on those three broads that just left the bar? Well, only one of them single. <laughs> so, probably like 10 Jaeger bombs. He said 30. I'm taking the under on that. <laughs> well, I'd take the under on it too because he's, he's already had five. <laughs> Here you go. I've had three. Three. That'll be a tab dispute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had a tab dispute last time I was there, but I didn't argue it. Well, he can take care of me. Well, he didn't need to take fine. care of me because I think they messed my tab up last time I was there. Because you don't spend sixty dollars on dollar draft night and ten cent wings or thirty cent wings. Ain't ten cent been a long time, but I'd like to come in there. <laughs> no, and have a beer. <laughs> there, I'm pretty sure. That, I'm pretty sure that there are thirty five cent wings. Yeah, last time ten cent wings existed, so did fifty five dollar of uh, natural light kegs. <laughs> Spent a few dollars. Oh, that's accurate. Sure. I know. That was my prime. All right. Hey, Mackie, man, we're going to have to wrap up. We're getting long. I don't care. You talking to me? <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you. I got serious there. Listen, you call me. You're on my, you're on my schedule now. Mackie, if I didn't love you so much, I'd hung up on you four seconds ago. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, man. <laughs> Why the cussing, man? We know we're pretty, pretty, we're pretty straight up clean and act, clean cut guys on this show, man. Yeah, since when? <laughs> <laughs> well, 15 episodes, and we've kind of slipped off a few times, yeah. so. Yeah, all right. I got well, sick when well, I listened I to the show you. last week. I dropped a lot last week. Uh, was that you, the one where you bitching about everything? Uh, no. That was one. No, no, that was the Keith Bullock one. I'm sorry. Yeah. <sighs> well, Mackie, man, we appreciate oh, you being hey, a star. Oh, oh, Goose about fell asleep last week. Driving back from Chicago, listen to that shit. No, it was the one before that. We were while we were waiting on Keith Bullock when we had a really uninspiring yeah, that's show. Right, that's we were, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We we talked. Yeah, that's right. So we talked about our kids and stuff. But other than that, after after we had the excitement of our kids, we're like, what else we got to talk about? Yeah. All right. Well. Well, hey, thank you for being a superstar. You're welcome. We turned you into a bigger superstar on our show this whole time. Hey, I show up and I show out, right? <laughs> That's right. Let's put, hey, let's put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I show up and hey, I show I, up. I, hey, I want to get those made. <laughs> well, we need about three eggs, Dustin. <laughs> and, and it goes with the guest. <laughs> and he just got hung up on. <laughs> now you're on my time, bitch. <laughs> when you listen to this tomorrow, you know you got hung up on for that three X comment. Yeah. Always a superstar, Jeremy Mackey, everybody. Always a superstar. If you like him, go back and listen. That's the last time you'll ever hear him on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For now. Yeah. Well, yep. So, so fun, man, to catch up with all these people after yeah. after all this time, you know, with, with Mackey and with his dad and Amber Harding. Uh, with Cucumber finally making an appearance on here, uh, you know, and Mickey Ryan. Yeah. So so much fun, man. So we had some really good guests, man. I've really enjoyed the guests. I really enjoyed them. Um, I still think my favorite my favorite episode so far was the Mike DeMeza. Mike Such DeMeza a good show. Time. Yeah. A good time. Too bad we couldn't get more of these things. If maybe we jumped the gun on them. Maybe we should have just waited to do a grand finale. But you know, this will be good and Oh yes. Yeah, you know, one. Mike DeMeza was a is, is I'm it, not I'm not one for long goodbyes, so I don't like to yeah. I don't like to stretch stuff out fit. Yeah, if my, it's time, it's time. Yeah, and like I said, look, it's, it's nothing that was that was done. It's just like, man, we thought we were really hitting our strides, and we were like, yeah, e- even a month ago, creatively, we really were. Lucas had all these commercials, and I, I wish we could plug those commercials in here just randomly, but maybe right. too much work on you. To put a few in for the night. Um, it's just, man, you know, I tell you what, I got two kids. Lucas got a kid. I've got next month. I've got. I'm refereeing. I'm coaching. Uh, I'm starting a business. He's, you know, he, he, yeah. Lucas is starting a business, which I'm glad we can finally mention. It's, yeah, it's a big. You know, Lucas just stepped away from a stepped away from Bonnell. You know, I've been down there for six, a little over six years, and or right at six years somewhere right in there. And I just stepped away from there, and I'm uh, starting my own business and starting my own thing. And it's, uh, you know, that's one of the things that's taking a lot of time, and it's it's a lot of pressure on you right now. Too. Yeah, well, it's. In to some in some sense, it's a lot less pressure than what I 
well, yeah. add, and you know, it in is. some some it's chance, a it's a lot more. Uh, so that's you know that's a pretty big thing. It's coming up. So maybe after that gets solidified and going, and everything gets smoothed out on that, maybe we can come back to it. You know, and your stuff slows down some. I, I just felt like when we come down here, and every week, you know, for the longest, you know, Lucas had something. Or I had something, you know, I couldn't yeah. wait to get here. I'm like, what do you got? Uh-huh. And, and you know, the other day we were like, man, we ain't got nothing. Yeah. You know, and it was just kind of like, man, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a f- full true believer of I'm not half-assing this stuff. You know, if I'm not feeling it, right. if I'm not feeling it and you're not feeling it while we're doing it in the last couple of shows, you're not really felt it other than the Bullock. I got into the yeah. Bullock, but a couple of shows and it's like, man, I'm not feeling it. Nobody else is gonna feel it, right? If if now the shows where we look like we were having fun, we were. Now I'm gonna tell you some of the shows that we've done in the last two months. That's what that's what we're looking for, and that's that's what we're trying to get people involved in, like the Ask OLR and the Lucas and DK, that or Lucas or DK. That was two of the biggest shows we had, and it's fun to have your fans interact, yeah, and be a part of the show. And lately, man, we've been having so much going on that we ain't had time to get that stuff going on. So it's. You know that stuff. That stuff takes time to do, and if you don't have the time to do it, you don't yeah. you don't get that fan interaction like you need it. Yeah, and by the time you've worked all day and you come home and you're daggum tired, and it's like, okay, what's a good idea for the show? Yeah. And then, now let's think about it. <laughs> now let's think like about it. Fifteen minutes before you get started. And you're, you know, so sometimes, so yeah, it is the case, man. It's just, it's nothing. Me and Lucas have been friends for uh, twenty five, twenty seven years. Twenty five years, probably. There's no. The, this is this is not this has been nothing but good for our friendship and bringing guys like James. It, it's always fun to have in here. He always he always looks like he's so offended we bring his name up, except for when you talk bad about me, which is every single oh, episode. I, I am probably I love the it. most mentioned person on the podcast, I, I, that's, and not in a positive way, unfortunately. <laughs> I was about to say that you, you're saying that, but you bitch. get more plugs than than oh, no. absolutely anybody. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I hear him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, always a bitching. Let's say bitching again. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I'm always mad too. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> so, no, there you easy. go. So, you're mad again. So, so anal. <laughs> mad again. Clearly, but it's all love. Clearly, y'all ain't been around me drunk enough. I'm real happy. It's all love. Yeah. Um. So I think I, I can't pinpoint a show, man, because I've I've got to live out some cool stuff on this show. Yeah. Stuff that you. Don't get enough credit for absorbing some of it that <laughs> that you could probably care less about. But I mean, to me, when it comes to NFL broadcasters, Mike Keith is the be all end all, and it's because I'm local. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know about the national scale. I don't know where I'd put him with other broadcasters. I don't, I don't listen to anybody else because I listen to him. Uh, Fifty minutes with Mike Keith was cool. Yeah, going over Titans history. Um, and then both times, I mean, everybody. crazy amount of uh, NFL football players. Yeah, just Dyson was cool, and Dyson told me the other day at the game he'd do it again, you know, but uh, we never got to go down that avenue again. But um, Pollard, always cool. Bernard Pollard, uh, anytime I could text him and say, hey, you good, as long as it was around his workout schedule or his reality television show schedule, uh-huh. Bernard was really down to do it. Uh-huh. Keith Bullock was cool. Uh, we made a lot of the situation last week, but – a lot, I mean, yeah, he blew us off during the day to have fun, but shit, he, st- he still called he us still, that night and said... And that, not only that, he's still Keith Bullock. <laughs> yeah, saying, Hell, he don't know you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. fact that he done it at all is something. It is, yeah. man, and uh, that's right. That Any of these athletes, even Mickey Ryan, who, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, he's on the radio. That's freaking cool that Mickey Ryan, who's on 104.5 every single evening... That's the sports radio I was listening to. It wasn't yeah. him, but I don't think yeah. it was. But that was the sports radio three I was to listening six. to today. He's from three to six every day. We don't work at late if I can help it. So, I mean, that these guys take time. You're right. Keith Bullock don't want... I mean, have I met Keith Bullock? Yeah. Does he remember me from anybody else? Probably not. You know? He was probably drunk then, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just have always been kind of just you know, honored these guys take time out of their schedule to, to do it, do that with us. Then you talk about musically, man. Yeah. The big one I always wanted to get, never was able to get Shooter Jennings. Had, like I said, had Colonel been living, I think it was a chance, but I never connected with Adam as much. Julie Roberts still, that damn got dang album from Shooter is never going <laughs> to release, I guess. She said, as soon as the Shooter released some album, I'll come on. So yeah, disappointed. I never got those two on here for us. But man, you talking about, we talked to Chris Knight. 
The lead singer of Cross Canadian Ragweed, Chris, Cody Canada. Chris Knight and Cross Canadian Ragweed had a big influence on our early college careers, too. <laughs> well, especially Chris Knight. I don't know that I'd... Well, yeah, we'd re- discovered Ragweed accidentally. They, they played at Tech. Yeah. That was awesome. For for the one of the first Tech musical fall the crap that they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was 2009. Later. Yeah, yes. 2009, yes. yep, because they broke I, up in 2010. I had just got married. I didn't get to go to the show. It, what's funny is we, we had a party at a friend of mine's house, pre, pre-game party, and they said, like, Where is the, where's the coolest place to go? What's funny is um, Char had sponsored that whole event. Everybody's like, Spankies, because it was a Tuesday and cool, and that's where everybody went. Yeah. Well, Cody and Cody Canada and uh, Grady Cross, which is his, one of his guitar players, go to Spanky's, and we're all there, man, like 10 of us. And the thing is, Cody's at the bar by himself, and I'd already spoke to him once, and we were, you know, it's two for one shots. Yeah. So well, there's like five of us at the table at the time, and I was like, hey, Cody, you want one of these Jager bombs? He goes, nah, I've already got a shot of tequila. Can't mix the two. And I talked to a boy after that, a uh, guy that I, I don't know his name now, but at the time I was around him some in circles, you know, he said, man, I smoked weed with ragweed. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said they were heading back down uh, the campus and I pulled up my Jeep and uh, huh. got to go on the bus with them, smoke a little bit. Huh. I said, did the boys from Oklahoma roll their joints all wrong? <laughs> Are they too damn skinny and way too long? But um, that was cool. Cody, you know, those, those things can be really awkward at times because, you know, when they're calling, they're like, is this Dustin? Yeah. You know? It's it's awkward, but Cody give us a, a good amount of time. That might be because you half stalk them. No, I don't half stalk them. I go to their shows. I full blown stalk them. I don't. I'll, I'll come to Nashville <laughs> with me sometime. I'll introduce you some real stalkers. Okay. I don't know. I went one time with you and Mackie. I understand. <laughs> yeah. No. But um, no, nah, man. They they were. I just that was really really cool. Still, probably my favorite was Jason eighty. Especially Jason since, was pretty good. And he texts me right afterwards. It's like, it pre- thanks. thank you yeah. for asking good questions. Let's have a beer sometime. Did, did he come on the show? Yeah. He didn't come down here. He called well, him. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know if I listened to that episode. Go I back, was really man. good, man. But, that one. but after going with you to Kentucky and meeting him, I can see that he would just be the most down-to-earth person Super ever. Down-to-earth. That's what I'm saying. James and Derek went to that show with me in Lexington at Justin Wells' friend's house. And man, he just, literally sat down on, my, on the damn cooler we were drinking out of and just sat down and had a conversation with us like it wasn't nothing. Of course, yeah. there's only 50 people there, right. but still super personable. Yeah. Very, very personable. Yeah, like I said, I mean, because that's why I took him up on it because he said, next time you're anywhere, let's have a beer because I really appreciate you guys asking good questions. And so remember that I was texting, we got to our hotel. I was like, Jason Eddy said, come on down, we'll go to the bar. And, yeah. But oh, it, well, and that, the thing is, like, I'm not. Dustin's one of the people who want to go take pictures with him. I don't want any part of that. I just went yeah, over didn't. and drink my beer. Yeah. But he come over and just literally just happened to sit down beside us, started talking, struck up conversation, was super nice, super normal, which is what celebrities need to be. And what about <laughs> right. Justin Wales? Same way. Yeah, same, Justin Wales. And probably even more so with Justin Wales. How big is Justin Wales in person? Big. He's a great oh big my unit. God. Eh? <laughs> Fucking. Like offensive lineman. Yeah, he's a big hey, unit. What did he say? Oh, he was like six six. Uh, I think he told somebody six five. I, six, I don't know. If I had to guess, I, I would say six five, probably two sixty. No, he's three hundred. Two seventy. Yeah, over 300. he might be. I was trying to give him a little credit. Yeah. Justin's he's always a big unit, brother. Let me yeah. tell you some. Justin has always been, but We're, super not. Like after the after this little tiny show at this little tiny house, they Justin Wells is outside putting chairs in the back of a truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. you'd think there'd be roadies to do that crap. No, yeah. he's, no awesome. he's out there doing it. Yeah. He he's the time that, like I said, I've told us numerous times on this show. I'm running to him at 2014 CMA Fest when Shooter plays, and just off talking, meeting him one time ever at a at a Cody Canada show, and then run into him just off Twitter exchanges. And he's like, "Hey man, come down sit with me." Okay, show's over. Hey man, you and your buddy, which was Derek. He said, "Come down to Riverfront Tavern and have a beer with me and Shooter." Oh, come play, come play pool with us over at uh, the Gold. I mean, man, it's ridiculous. And like I, I was on the Nimrod. Give me how quick he. I was on the Nimrod. Said, "Hey, man, doing the last podcast night. You got five minutes for us." By the time I get to Lucas's driveway, he's, he's calling. calling me. Yeah. He said, "When? What's the deal, man? You we last who raw tonight?" And I wish we'd have just been able to record that conversation. But thank you, Justin, for That's that. All, and and his music was good. I'm not as familiar with as I am Jason Eighties, but. Mm. It, it was good. Edie had the voice that you hear. 
Like what you hear is what you get. No, yeah. probably then some. It, it's probably better. But I mean, the music that night, and it, that ain't something. I'm I'm not into that. Like Decay is obviously, but it was unbelievable. Oh yeah. I mean, Don Asbury listened to that podcast with Jason, and they went and looked his music up. Didn't know anything, and he's now he's looking for concerts. For Edie, yeah, yeah, I, I believe it. Like he's, he's just deal. he's playing a Nashville Friday night. And I, I took this off. Friday. Yeah, but it's late. It's late, and I was gonna. I text him trying to get connections. It's a really cool event, Americana Music Fest. It starts. It started last night. Like I said, I, that woman was wrong. Uh, Lucas <laughs> Nelson played the Opry last night. <laughs> he played a record store called Grimey's, a record release party. Which would have been cool to go to because Sturgill Simpson done a little record release party about three years ago down there, and now look at him—he's world touring, doing Saturday Night Live. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And this guy's Willie's son, so that'd been cool. Tonight they had the Americana Music Awards at the Ryman, and then basically you got five days of music. You pay seventy-five dollars for a wristband. It's got like six bars involved, and you get to go from bar to bar all week long. Whatever and Cody Canada's playing tomorrow night. Um, Tyler Childers is playing tomorrow night. Mm. Um, Jason's playing Friday night. Tell your kids mess that shit up. Waylon's got a homecoming tomorrow night, and eight <laughs> kids coming home with us Friday night. Responsibilities for your children. Well, uh-huh. so uh, but yeah, that 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 was a highlight for me. All of my musical heroes. That oh, you know, I won't say heroes. I put that in the Waylon and George Jones and Hank Jr. These guys are guys that some somewhat our age heroes. Yeah. You know this generation. That was cool. I, I enjoyed everything. I enjoyed yeah. our shows with with James. I enjoyed our shows with Mackie. Mm-hmm. I mean, all these guys that have that have been on. I, I can't. If y'all decide to get back in it, you'll be back. Ha, have yeah. I'll, obviously, I don't care. But I live down the road, so it ain't it ain't hard for me. Ha, have more guests. I always have a guest. Yeah. There's no reason not to. You know, if you can get one, yeah, right. There's, there's no you reason one, you, yeah. you've got the damn microphones. Have yeah. a couple. Uh huh. It, it'll always keep things more interesting. Yeah. And another thing I liked, I love the concepts. I mean, the Ask OLR was huge mm. because it gets people involved. Um, the Lucas or DK was hilarious because yeah. everybody wanted to remind me real quick that I was not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably thought those questions through a little better. <laughs> well, shit. What fun would that have been? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can take a little abuse on my own show here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of fun. Uh, so can I. <laughs> yeah, so can everybody. <laughs> you got to know when you come on this show that... You're going to get a little bit of abuse. Yeah, a little bit. What else What else from the from 65 episodes stood out to you? Ah, uh, man, you, you pretty much covered it. That's uh, The musical guests were fantastic. I mean, I had a pretty, I've had got a pretty eclectic mix of musicians I listen to anyway, yeah. but I got some good additions in there. And, you know, the... Uh, uh, the sports, like you said, I'm not. That's not really my thing. You know, what, listen to all the sports, but you know, listen to have somebody have a conversation, an intelligent conversation about that stuff is interesting. You know, as long as it's yeah. as long as both sides of the conversation that are going well. Yeah, you know, I didn't. I didn't chime in on those because I didn't have anything to add. But it was interesting to sit and listen to, and it, I wouldn't have added anything that anything I added would have been detracting from the conversation most generally. So it, it, they were good. You know, I really enjoyed them. Lucas even asked, he said, he said we can even turn this straight into a sports show. And I was like, no, nobody cares. <laughs> It's like nobody wants to listen to all sports. As if, if so, we could do it another time. I said the best part yeah. is about me and you giving each other crap, making fun of each other, bringing our friends on, having segments like those two I just mentioned. Uh, and I needed something. Uh, I needed something to. This gives me more credibility because all I had out there before was my comedy. Comedy that was not good. <laughs> it was good sometimes, but it was good for people who knew you well. But the, the thing is, like I said. Uh, somebody like Trey Crowder that has made it famous, he wanted that. Right. I never said, hey, man, I'd love to be a stand-up comedian. I was sitting there drinking at Crawdaddy's when Trey Crowder said, I just did my first stand-up. Come do one with me. So his his second one was my first. And what was mine mostly? I didn't give a shit if 25 all the people on the other side of the bar heard it. The 30 or 40 or 50 that I brought... On this side of the bar, it was a comedy roast of Thad Johnson, and that's what <laughs> that's what we loved. And had I stuck with it, what was my two jokes I had in Knoxville that night? The black the black girl that lived next to you over there on McClellan. Yeah, she kept saying something about uh, what was she said if uh, he can grab a if you get one cornhole, I can you can grab a, my butt or something, and I got three in. I said I'm grabbing both boobs. She said, "Honey, you ever been with a black girl? It's the best I ever had." She said. 
you know, once you go black, you never come back. I said, honey, won't you come white and get your credit right? <laughs> that was true. Remember saying that to her? It was her? one hell of an interesting evening. That was, that was more interesting for others than me and you, for sure. And then what was the other one? Of course, we never even told this on the podcast. No, and I'd get killed if we did. <laughs> no, not that part. No, oh, no, no. Oh. no, I would never tell that. But, uh, I mean, unless I was asked to. I, jo- I, jo- <laughs> I joke about it probably three times a week. Oh, no, I, I, I guarantee it. Of course, the other big line I always used at the comedy shows that I, it was still funny is when, of course, the timeline, I found out we were pregnant with the first kid, and then I'd get out and have a, get emotional and sink a truck. Sink a truck in the creek? Sink a truck in a, in a, a perfectly fine black, nice Chevrolet truck straight down in a creek. And when I finally break it to my mom, like a week later, of course, the big punchline always was Dustin. Had all this stuff going for you. You know, you're about to go back to school, blah, blah, blah. Now all of a sudden, uh, now all of a sudden, uh, you sink your truck in a creek, got your girlfriend pregnant. How in the hell do you explain this? So mom is playing it simple. I pulled into one place, didn't pull out the other one. <laughs> and that's how my comedy career started. Yeah. These guys are like, hey, man. And ended. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never told those jokes again. Well. Like most, most co- comedians tell same jokes forever and it gets traction i was like these same people are going to see me I'm, I'm doing something different i'm gonna make fun of thad for making heart emojis on facebook and matching his uh undershirt with the same color eagle on his american eagle shirt and for just being thad in general and james got a few of those for charity you got it for charity once that's I, it I, I took it for charity so uh you took a lot for less <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. We didn't give anything to anybody. Out here. No, hey. We roasted the shit up. I, I tell you right now, I, I gave a hundred and ninety percent for that charity for that year. <laughs> but uh, you know that, that that's what uh. Well, Matthew Smith just said, check out the video Hannah put on Facebook of Luke Bryan. So I'll check it out when I get down there. He said he shared it. I thought Cody shared it because you know only him. I don't trust. I don't trust Facebook accounts. It says. And in between them. Never know who it is. You don't, because it says Cody and Matthew Smith. What have you done messed up? You got to share a Facebook account or something. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I'm not saying they did. I'm not saying Matthew did or Cody. I'm saying, like, in, in general, yeah. you know, you're always like, all right, now, uh-huh. why y'all sharing that account for? <laughs> you never go, hey, look here. I'll go back to MySpace before I share my, my Facebook account. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> You don't want her answering your DMs. <laughs> That's right with me. <laughs> Them are long gone, my friend. Damn. Man gets 250. People forget it. People forget about it. <laughs> Not to mention married with two kids. But uh, no, I think um, I think this show was that. Like I was like, I always want to be more proud of something. Right. And that's why we did it. Yeah. And it was good. It was a good time. And we may come back to it. Luke has done it to get out of his shell. Yeah. And he did. I did. Uh, I did it just because I like to hear myself talk. <laughs> like, <laughs> no surprise there. Agreed on that. But no, nah, there's been shows that I've, it's been cringe where like, I was like, oh God, that's just as bad as my comedy. I mean, when you go back and listen. Yeah. But not many. Yeah, that's not bad. Sometimes I just say stuff I shouldn't say. They can't all be good. I'm just saying I just should, I talked to him. I say, I, <laughs> you should have been like, well, dude, you, you, you sure you put hey, it? It's half yours too, brother. I know, you, but <laughs> you're the one over there who got the editing skills. You'd be like, all right, you, th- you sure you really want to go with that, DK? Yeah. Sometimes you just got to cut that edit button out. Can you believe, though? I mean, there's been times that I really thought it could have been worse. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, you I know, know you. you know. <laughs> I know it could have been worse. <laughs> I know what you're capable of. Yeah. We didn't get kicked off iTunes for anything. We is did that, have to change it from... Is that uh, possible? Clean to explicit. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it very much is. Shows where I know about podcasting. Yeah. We did have to change the uh, advisory. From nothing to explicit. I am going to see a, something really cool in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Just before we left out. I've got... Boo at the zoo. Uh, hey, uh, Justin Wells said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I just now seen your text. I'm at home with and hitting the hay. Sorry. Hate to hear y'all are taking a break, brother. Uh, but I understand that as much as anybody. Yeah, he's... <laughs> he took a break from a band and started yeah. started his own the only thing. band he ever knew and did yeah. his old thing. So uh, yeah. so when you see the one lane road podcast with Lucas Hickman, know that I'm know that I'm the Parsons <laughs> of the bunch and Lu- and Lucas is the Justin Wells, <laughs> and he's left me. Right. Um, well, that's probably no, not going to happen. I'm going to uh, I've signed Waylon up to uh, Shaquille O'Neal basketball camp in West Tennessee next week for his birthday. 
are you driving him to West Tennessee all week? No, it's just it's just one day uh, thing. It's a uh, eight to twelve at four different schools, and Shaq's coming in, and spending time with every everything. Then at eleven o'clock, they're busting all the kids up in the four schools and going over, and he's eating dinner with them, speaking to them as a group. Is that only so you can meet Shaq? Yes. I've already met him. Yes, it is. I've already met him. BK is going to play. Does it have a damn thing to do with Waylon? Let's be no. honest. No, Waylon Waylon's loves not even Shaq going. too. Uh, <laughs> I'm a twelve. I'm. A, I actually signed myself up as eleven as eleventh 11 grader. 12 year old. As an eleventh grader, it goes like ages eight through 12, uh, seventeen or something. Now Waylon likes Shaq too, because he respects greatness, or because you told him. To. What does Shaq? What does Shaq Bobble have to say? He said, "Yeah, I can't wait to be in Humboldt, Tennessee, and Jackson." That's clearly saying no. Shaq said, "No, he doesn't, James." That little boy, he didn't sign up. Should that you know big that? guy? That big guy's been there. The big guy with the beard. I recognize him. I know. I know who that kid is. He was peeking through a window. <laughs> I know that kid. McNair says. He's the guy that hangs out with the guy that takes naked selfies <laughs> with Green Bay tattoos. <laughs> I see him. I seen them pictures. That's so fucking <laughs> awful. I swear yeah. it's awful. He accidentally sent it to NBA on TNT. <laughs> that guy's a pervert. Arrest him. That I didn't do. I do police work. You're a pervert. You like girls. Little girls. Little boys. Like them all. Big and tall. Well, all right. Yeah. There's nothing else to say. That's Lucas it. broke up with me today at one thirty. I broke up with DK today. <laughs> We're all mad at each other. Never talking We're again. never talking to each other again. Big rift. I'm pissed at y'all for talking about me. I, I, James is still mad. <laughs> 66 episodes. He's breathing. <laughs> No, but thank you for everybody, everybody along the way that's that's uh, helped out in any any way. Uh, uh, this may not be it, but this is it for now. So uh, catch us up on the uh, on the archives. Listen to this show yeah. when you can, because we don't know when it's going to be taking off iTunes. <laughs> yeah, spread it, the word. Yeah, this uh, it probably by the end of the month. I don't I don't know what'll happen. I'm gonna I want to suspend the. Uh, podcast helps just to be on youtube so anybody can catch it on youtube so. yeah but it, it'll be like i said you've been on youtube and uh go back and listen to all the old shows while you can yeah make our numbers look good one more time yeah <laughs> so uh like i said thank you all the all the local friends all the athletes all the musicians everybody that everybody's contributed uh we appreciate you and uh appreciate you lucas for asking me to do this it's a good time man i appreciate it it's fun i liked it maybe we'll get to do it some more sometime soon All right, everybody. Thanks for listening.